we have been waiting for for a long time. Uh, and we are very happy that this day has arrived. GSP is uh, a historic reform and can only do good uh, for us as an economy. Any reform that uh, results in simplification, I think, is very good for us. The hotel industry is very much ready, is very much ready for the rollout. I think what we got the sense that there would be price reduction or there will be stable pricing for the next two, three months. Whatever was an estimate earlier on indirect taxes will now be a finality with the input tax credit. So I think the impact should be a very good impact on this. The biggest impact has been uh, there in terms of dampening the, the volume growth and uh, perhaps uh, uh, to, to levels which are very low. The impact is there in the industry because most of the stockists uh, hmm. have not been buying. Good evening and thanks very much for joining us here on our special broadcast on Network 18. I'm Shireen Bhan and with me in the studio in our GST headquarters outside of Parliament at the Imperial Hotel in the capital is Bupen Chobe. And we've of course got a star-studded lineup here in our studios with us Mukesh Bhutani, Mr. Lakshmi Kumaran, Professor Gowda of the Congress Party, Ashok Malik and in our Mumbai studios Rohan Shah. We've also got with us uh, Mr. Rohila and of course MS Money of Deloitte. We'll be joined by more guests in a short while now as we come down to the rollout of the GST, Parliament all lit up, awaiting the function to begin which starts in Central Hall at about midnight tonight. But before that, uh, uh, let's just go across to our big newsmaker this evening. Joining us all the way from Chennai is the former Finance Minister, Mr. P. Chidambaram. Mr. Chidambaram, thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Sir, the Congress Party is the key architect or the original architect of the goods and services tax. You've been a part of the GST Council. The GST Council has cleared the legislation. Parliament has cleared the legislation. You've decided to come this way. Why then the decision to boycott the session in Parliament, sir? The Finance Minister extending an invitation to the former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh to be party to the uh, proceedings in Parliament today. Why has the Congress decided to stay away? I am in Chennai, I don't know the circumstances under which the decision was taken, but the leaders of the Congress party addressed a press conference yesterday and explained the reasons. So I have nothing to add, but what is important is that the Congress party supports the GST, it was the originator of the idea of GST, we welcome the introduction of GST, although it is an imperfect law as of today and uh, participation or otherwise in the midnight event has nothing to do with the substance of the matter namely that the Congress is the original proponent of GST and we support the GST. So you support the GST, you don't support the fact that the GST is rolling out on the 1st of July because you believe that we're not ready for it just yet. You would have preferred the 1st of October. But Mr. Chidambaram, the fact of the matter is it is 1st of July, so there's no going back on that. What do you see as being the biggest challenge in the implementation? Everyone's talking about glitches, teething trouble. What do you see as being the biggest challenge as we get set for the rollout? The biggest challenge is you're rolling out when very, very large sections of small and medium business and even large businesses have made it abundantly clear that they are yet unprepared for the rollout. You're doing this against the wishes of the taxpaying community. When we rolled out VAT, there was not one voice which said we are unprepared. Six states, for political reasons or other reasons, did not or could not join VAT on day one. But within four or five months, they joined VAT. But no one in the business community said he or she was unprepared. Now here the business community is crying hoarse for the last couple of months that we are unprepared and the government is refusing to heed their voice. That, I think, is the biggest stumbling block. Okay, you're saying that the business community is expressing its inadequacy uh, to be ready for a July 1 rollout. We've been speaking with the business community, whether it's CII or FICI, they're saying July 1, we're all set to go. Yes, there are legitimate concerns that are being raised by the MSME sector in terms of preparedness. But Mr. Chidambaram, uh, you know, 
It is going to be July 1 now, sir. In terms of disruption on the ground, given the experiences that you were just alluding to when we switched over to VAT, and this is very, very different, what do you see as being the big disruption, sir? See, to be dismissive of the business community is, uh, for want of a better word, uh, simply pontification. I think it's unfair. The government is a government of the people. In this case, the people are business persons and consumers, and their voices must be heard, be that as it may. I think there are design flaws in the GST. It is not, let me repeat, it is not a one tax. I can understand a one tax being interpreted to mean a standard rate, a standard minus rate for special goods and a standard plus rate for demerit goods. This has got seven or eight rates and if more and more cessions are added there could be as many as a dozen rates. Secondly, there's diarchy in administration. If your turnover is less than 1.5 crore, 90% will fall under the jurisdiction of the state government and 10 under the jurisdiction of the central government. If your turnover is over 1.5 crore, the division will be 50-50. Now, whether a taxpayer falls under the state government or the central government, will it be decided by a lottery? What kind of a diarchy in administration is this? The third major flaw is a number of returns. Most countries require you to file a return once a quarter. Here we have three returns a month plus an annual return. By any conservative count, a business person has to file 37 returns in one jurisdiction. If he's a multi-state business, you have to multiply that number 37 by the number of states. The last, uh, and according to me, the most abominable flaw is the anti-profiteering authority. Anyone who, whoever dreamt of this idea or conceived this idea, I'm afraid there's no knowledge of either economics or business or market or competition. I think this should go. If this government doesn't repeal the anti-profiteering authority clause, I have no doubt a wiser next government will repeal it. Well, so the Revenue Secretary in an interview to me has clarified that uh, this business of 37 returns is not accurate information, it's untrue. And even as far as the anti-profiteering instrument and the anti-profiteering authority is concerned, the government saying that it's an instrument of last resort, it's the Brahmastra, so to speak, to be used only if they actually need to. But uh, let me end, sir, you're not uh, going to be here in Parliament, so let me end then by asking you, uh, what is your message to the Finance Minister and the government this evening? Well, I can only give them my good wishes, uh, less symbolism and more substance is what I would wish for uh, and uh, no one can rewrite history, no one should attempt to rewrite history. The Congress and the UPA were the originator of the idea of GST and we steered it, both me and then Mr. Pranam Mukherjee and then again I, steered it a long way until 2012 when it was stalled I don't have to tell you who stalled it now in 2014 the Congress cooperated with the government in passing the GST laws and that again is a historical fact no one can say that the Congress did not cooperate with the government the laws are made now the GST will come into effect on 1st of July Let's, for the sake of the country, wish that the rollout is smooth and GST will be positive for the country. Well, thanks very much, Mr. Chidambaram, for joining us there and for that message for the Finance Minister and the government. Let me bring in a quick uh, word in from our tax experts who've been patiently waiting in. Rohan Shah, you just heard the former Finance Minister there. Uh, you know, we've been together on this program now for virtually the last several months, analyzing and decoding the decisions that have been taken by the GST Council. Uh, literally uh, under three hours to go now for the rollout. Mr. Shah, how, uh, how secure do you believe things are for the rollout? I think uh, the government wouldn't be pushing this date and this time if it wasn't uh, convinced that you know the entire mechanism is in fact secure. 
Uh, and therefore, there are two parts to it. One is the government's own preparedness and, importantly, the industry's preparedness. I think the government must feel confident uh, about its own preparedness uh, and we must trust that. I don't think we should second guess that. As far as industry is concerned, you know, quite clearly uh, you are hearing the doyens of industry sort of saying they are prepared and then you are hearing the small and medium sector saying that they are less so. And from my perspective, therefore, quite clearly that segment of industry is feeling less confident and government has given a facilitation up to the 5th of September to say, you know, you will have more time to sort of effectively come on board. So one feels, you know, the various elements, uh, at least at the government end, are ready. Uh, in industry, I think there is a chunk which is ready and some part which isn't. Uh, two important parts that, you know, we ought not to really forget. One, I think we've finished only one phase of GST, which is the legislative and the prescriptive phase. This is the phase where we've told everyone this is the law and part of it is ominously still evolving. There is going to be another phase which is just the pure migration and the third phase is really going to be the phase of tax administration and interpretation. This GST will not be fully delivered till we don't get past all three stages. And to get past all three stages I think we still have another year, year and a half to go. So what we can really talk of in terms of preparedness is that as of today, uh, government feels the GST and etc. is prepared, industry feels prepared, but there is still a phase to come which is the actual migration and then the whole administration and interpretation. The one other element that you know none of us have visibility of is a very, very important part of the system which is the tax administrator. How well prepared is the tax administrator? Many of them have dealt with VAT all their lives, they don't understand services. And while I believe the outreach programs have tried to take on board all tax administrators, to me one other missing element on which at least I have no visibility is that how well is that tax administrator prepared. So it's a amalgam of many you moving parts. I think Rohan, you make a, that, that's, a, that's a very important point that you make that how well is the tax administrator really, really ready, how prepared is he? Because you know a lot of panelists who have been joining us uh, in course of our programming have been suggesting that there may be speed breakers, there may be these speed bumps, maybe these are the bumps that we're looking at. Let me also quickly welcome our political panelists here, Ashok Malik, our in-house commentator is here, and Professor Rajiv Garo, the spokesperson of the Congress Party here with us, Jeevil Narsimha Rao of the Bharatiya Janata Party, and D. Raja, leader of CPI, live with us as well. Let me just begin with you, Professor Garo. You know, this point which is being made, that listen, it's a good move. It's a good move, a move whose time had come. Where does the Congress Party stand? Do you believe this GST is good? Are you simply opposed to this midnight session because it's about giving credit to Prime Minister Modi? What is the Congress's real position today? If the Congress party were in a position to roll out GST today, we would have made sure that four or five steps would have been in place. We would have made sure that the GSTN network was tried and tested and ready to go. We would have made sure that there would be workshops in districts so that every small and medium and micro enterprise would know how to migrate to the GST. We'd wait and uh, we'd make sure that all states had come under, uh, had passed the state GST law. Do you think the government has done nothing of this? These are, these are the flaws. They're, that's the reason why we're really concerned. Mm. You, you know, with demonetization, they did the same thing. Some big bang announcement and then chaos in implementation. So again, again, again comparison, comparison again, demonetization. Again, once again, we're seeing this government mm. focusing on the grand tamasha and not on the impact on the economy. Jeevan Lassimara, let's, let's, let's get a response to Jeevan Lassimara because I think the point being made by Rohan Shah, tax, tax expert in you, Jeevan is it, it's straightforward. The government, fresh from this Uttar Pradesh, big massive victory, success of demonetization according to the government, now wants to go in for the kill and therefore it's simply moving on without thinking, without being absolutely convinced whether it's prepared or not as a criticism coming from the Congress party. Are we prepared, GVL, at the end of the day? Absolutely, Bupendra. I think uh, depending on whom you choose to speak to in the Congress party, you are getting different explanations as to why they are not attending the session tonight. And I think there is utter confusion and chaos in the Congress party itself. Because you heard something from in the, in the press conference addressed by the Congress leaders yesterday. Party spokespersons on different channels are coming up with different explanations. So I, I, I'm at a loss. 
is it simply the congress party is unwilling to join this uh, momentous um, uh, uh, occasion in our history is it what let's be honest let's be honest to mr bada your uh, real problem is, is you don't wish to fact. give credit to prime minister modi unfortunately modi is the real problem for you <laughs> no, no, you no, believe no. modi will come he will make a speech the entire semantics the imagery will be only and only around prime minister modi and you and your party cannot accept unfortunately it. we we placed the nation's interest above all that and the the words that he used utter confusion that's what we're going to see from tomorrow with the trading economy is going to be going through utter confusion there is going to be multiple perspectives on what has this government done to us modi gets his grand drama and the people and the economy Can I tell you you seem to be in a minority today you know shri shrin and i have been speaking to a whole range of cii pinky business so i'm looking at two different worlds cii being with shrin man is to look at two different worlds cii so the business cii community, there is a political Please, you should have been speaking to the trader yeah. to the people in the textile industry who are going to sh shut down their factories okay. you should have been speaking to everyone out okay. there who is yeah, saying no, we, what we, is this government doing to us once again Mr. another tale of incompetence Mr. from the modi sarkar unleashing havoc on the economy to be fair sir your your party is part of the gst council yes. sir the gst council has decided on july 1st as the date of the rollout if you were so averse to the 1st of july sir why didn't the congress party dissent within the gst council but, uh, but i i don't want to make this about the congress versus the bjp because this is a far more important issue mukesh bhutani on the critical issue that mr gaura raised and I I think there are legitimate concerns on the preparedness of the MSME sector. Let's be honest about that. There's no getting away from that. But do you believe that there is going to be the words used, utter chaos, utter confusion, uh, you know, come midnight tonight? Well, I'm not going to get into slugfest. No, uh, I'm not asking you to. I'm not asking uh, political, you. Political. Uh, I think what's important to understand is that when the constitutional amendment took place last year, the amendment gave a time period of one year, which was a transition time period. the states actually lose their right to levy tax or under vat under the uh, you know under the erstwhile law so i don't think that there were any options over here purely from a constitutional law standpoint and as a result of that you have to have implementation the second thing is that as indians we are always used to doing things at the last moment i can tell you with great degree of confidence that even if the july 1 date gets shifted to september 1 we will still be facing the threat on the 25th of september by the, the trucking same. community mm. or by the msv nobody rules out the possibility of uh, uh, disruption yeah. that's likely to happen in trade and commerce starting midnight today mm -hmm. i think the issue over here is different for large companies and different for small and medium enterprises but the large companies are equally concerned because under the erstwhile law when the goods left the factory gate yeah excise duty liability was discharged and that's it mm. uh now what's likely to happen is that if their service providers which are the logistics company uh, which are the uh, companies that provide which which fall in the medium uh, yeah. enterprise sector if they are not ready mm. for example if they don't have a gst registration number yeah. the trouble starts there because mm. the entire gst chain before it goes away will break away their attitude so are they just steering problems are they just steering problems the intent is there the preparedness is there let's have let's be ready to face some steering you problems know, there will be disruption there will be uh, serious compliance issues because there's such a new tax new with tax. so many yeah. new compliance uh, requirements and i think for the next 6 months if not a year there will be teething troubles as we go from one stage to another of the the gst chain uh, but uh, the fact is as mr hutani suggested if you hit this date of september 1st or april 1st next year or whatever it is you will still have this this initial cup so you will have this problem so this political opposition mr raja if you can hear me sir this political opposition you know this boycott of this special session is it simply for politics sake it's not about facts it's not about merits or demerits it's just that you do not Okay Mr Raja I I'm, I'm told uh, we we don't have him right now we'll try and go back to him uh, Okay we'll go back to him but as Ashok Malik was pointing out and I remember Rohan Shah on one of our earlier shows saying that the GST should not be a race to a date it should be a race to a result So MS Money let me ask you that question now given where we stand today and we've been talking about the difficulties that are likely to be faced by the uh, small and medium enterprises specifically on the tax administration front and I think that was a crucial issue raised as well uh, you know dealing with services for instance at the state tax administration level how big a challenge is that going to be uh it is a major challenge and it is a major challenge not only for the tax administrators but also for service providers 
since you asked about the tax administrators, let me just focus on that. I believe for the last uh, eight to nine months or so, the government has been spending a lot of time in training its officials. And a lot of effort and a lot of time has gone into ensuring that all the tax administrators have been trained. The question is, have they been adequately trained and will they be able to discharge their functions from day one? And I think it is very obvious that no one will be able to grapple with the law from day one, primarily because of two reasons. One is the fact that the law has evolved over the last three or four months. The final notifications and final rules have been released just a week or so back. And therefore, even the tax administrators will need to read this, understand this and interpret this. Having said that, I don't think anyone expects the tax, administra uh, tax administrators to be equipped with the right answers from day one. If, as we go along over the next one or two months or so, the tax administrators are able to grapple, deal with the taxpayers fairly, and make the GST very, very acceptable to everyone, uh, I think that is more than half the battle won. Because to me, the key challenge that today... Point, yeah. today. On that point of acceptability, and let me get Mr. Lakshmi Kumaran and Mr. Roila to respond to that. Mr. Lakshmi Kumaran, you know, the messaging from the government has changed in the last few weeks. The messaging from the government is now, look, we understand the challenges, we understand the problems, we want GST to be acceptable and palatable, and hence it's going to be a light touch approach when it comes to enforcement, at least for the first few months are concerned. Do you believe that that message now has allayed a lot of the fears and concerns on the ground? What is the feedback that you're getting? I think uh, you're absolutely right. As far as the trade is concerned, they were definitely worried whether uh, they will be able to comply with all the laws. But this time the government has been responsive. Many of the questions raised have been answered very, very responsibly. And also we get positive responses from the government saying that in the first few months, if there are legitimate mistakes or something, etc., yeah. we are not going to take a very harsh decision against you, etc. Having said that, one must also certainly must look at it. This GST is indirect tax. It is a commodity tax. When the rates were announced by the council with regard to various commodities, yeah. and it is supposed to come in the 1st of July, you will see all the retailers are coming saying the pre-GST sale discounts and all. Mm, mm, why? Mm. Why? Just ask this question, why? On 1st of July or whatever date, etc., it is going to change rates. Yeah. You have got an existing stock. After yes. all, the stocks have to move. You can't just stop the production. Sure. It cannot. The economy yes. is not good. So therefore, the goods are going to be manufactured. are going to be in this time. Longer they are going to have the gap between now and say 1st September, the uncertainty of this particular thing will continue. The production will continue. The retailers are uncertain. Yeah. And so therefore, they, so, so they are confused about how the transition stock and the transition rules exactly. are going to apply, which is why you are seeing these GST maharat sales uh, exactly. uh, being, being uh, played out across the country. Big yeah. Bazaar is going to be open post midnight tonight, and they've got a, a massive sale on as well. Yeah. So there is there is a confusion and perhaps maybe even trust deficit on how these rules, the transition rules, it will apply. Trust deficit. Basically, you must realize on first of July when the rates are going to be increased, when the prices are going to go up they are going to get less credit. Mm. Therefore, they are going to lose money. Mm. So, losing then, they get a the goodwill of the community Customer. and then yeah. say, I'll give a discount now. Take what, it. About, what about this political fear which is being expressed by the West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee who's put out a rather elaborate Facebook post just a short while back where she says that GST will lead to return of Inspector Raj. That industrialists are going to be harassed. Small farmers are going to, small traders are going to be harassed. I mean, I, I could say, I could say hmm. that interface between the taxpayer and the tax collector is going to be reduced. Yeah. It's going to be reduced. The, it's yeah. reduced. Mm. Because the whole thing is going to be online. Mm. Therefore, you are going to face the machine and the software mm. and not the face of the department. Mm. The, the entire, the entire I mean, objective so of should GST we not, should and... We welcome this then? I mean, should, should, should the Congress, the Trinamool Congress not welcome this move? Which said, instead of suggesting that this is the return of Inspector Raj? No, 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 no. The, you see, when there is a lot more discretion, ultimately, when many, many, many issues are going to come up, uh, for clarification, mm -hmm. when the same good uh, in this category it comes under five percent, in some other category it comes under twelve or eighteen, mm -hmm. that's going to uh, that confusion will have to be resolved by human beings. Mm -hmm. And at that point, discretion would come into play. Uh, you know, various kinds of um, uh, you know what, uh, what, what what's, the, what's the word for that? Uh, not not <laughs> adjudication is a kind word for that. The, the human interface a, comes in. A political economy word for okay. it, which is about. The, 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 
infraction. Rim what's the word infraction? Huh? Rent shaking is the okay. word, yeah. No, no, That's no, what no, would end up no, happening no, no. at that yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. You see, welcome. many of these questions about the light touch administration can be asked of the union government, they should be asked of the sure. union government. But frankly, they also need to be asked of state government. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Because, you know, in India, infrastructure for tax collection was uh, invested in by big manufacturing states mm. like Maharashtra, Gujarat, mm. Tamil Nadu and so on and so forth. Uh, here, this is, this is a destination based tax rather than a source based tax. So uh, states like UP and Bihar, traditionally poor states, mm. are suddenly going to be collecting a lot of tax because they have lots of consumers. Yeah. So they also have to upgrade their tax systems, they also have to registrize their tax officers. No, no, and there is, there is dual empowerment here as far as tax administration is concerned. So the state in, government, in the sense, state government this, this is whole, going to play a part as well. federal competition will yeah. also be judged by how modern your own GST tax system in your state is. Fair point. But let me, let me address this issue of rent seeking because this is a genuine concern uh, and one of course has to deal with the anti-profiteering clause aspect of the law but the other is this business of discretion. Mukesh, let me start by asking you about how you allay this concern and whether this is a legitimate or a justified concern to have. Sure. It's partly related to the earlier question on, uh, on, on enforcement uh, mechanism. The GSTN network is expected to, uh, the outcome is that there will be less interface between the taxpayer. The assessment will be self-assessment process. But I think the bigger challenge lies in the fact that currently mm. the state revenue officials are trained and groomed in a manner that they have to do an assessment where they call for the register, books yeah. of accounts. Yeah. I think, and I think this requires a deeper degree of administrative reforms as to how do you reorient the skills mm. of the inspectors to be able to familiarize themselves with risk assessment yeah. procedures and only pick up sus suspect cases for mm. assessments or audit mm. or investigation. Mm. So I think this is where the concern of Inspector Raj is coming from that by the time you're going through this transition phase of reorienting the skills yeah. of the revenue state revenue officials, mm. how will you be able can to... I look at, can I look at it this way Mukesh, and maybe, maybe I can take the question of Jeevan Lansimar or Shireen. So, you know, I mean Mukesh Bhutani's argument and a whole range of other tax experts, what the, the view seems to be GVL that maybe it would have been better if there would have been some kind of a trial period. Then maybe many of these, you know, speed bombs, many of these teething problems that we're talking about would not have existed. Did the government at any stage think of, of having some kind of a trial period, maybe for a couple of months? In, in, a, in a sense, I, I think the, uh, <coughs> all the SSCs will get the first one or two months. They are, they are anyway being given a grace period to file the first month's return. There are bound to be teething troubles, but then let them uh, let them learn while doing it. They, I think a trial will never be uh, can can never be a pilot can never be on the same scale under under real conditions as a as a, a real month would be. So, in my opinion, I think the teething troubles, if they are there, they will be uh, there will be certain uh, laxities that will that will be shown. There will be a grace period that will be available, and let them learn while doing it. I don't think there was a trial required because no trial can exactly replicate a real experience. So, uh, to that sense, there, in that there, sense, there, I there think, I'm uh, afraid. Uh, there, there, there I'm afraid, Mr. GVL Narsimha There I'm afraid you will not find that much support. I think there is consensus within at least the uh, the community that is uh, working on the goods and services tax that yes, there ought to have been a trial period. In most countries where the GST has been rolled out, there have been extensive trial periods. But let me bring in our tax experts to respond to you, and then I'll get you to respond to them. Uh, uh, let me start by asking you, Mr. Roila. You just heard what the BJP spokesperson there said that this, this uh, fact that we're giving you an extension as far as your GST return filing is concerned, this should suffice as the trial period <coughs> itself. Does that, does that argument fly? Well, uh, firstly, I think uh, the government is mindful that uh, it would require to give some trial period to the industry. And keeping that in mind, they did extend uh, uh, the return filing date. So. Uh, it's not only the written filing date, but they have also eased in terms of the format of the return. Uh, so they are mindful and they have extended that. Now, having said that, uh, very clearly we are talking of worries. My first uh, point is that why should we worry? Aren't we, uh, weren't we worried about 17 taxes which we talked of? Uh, there were 17 taxes vis-a-vis -vis now we are talking of GST. So it is a gigantic reform. Of course, there would be teething problems initially, no doubt about it, and government is mindful and I feel this is the time where govern, government can extend 
uh, their arms by saying that we will give further relaxation in terms of procedures, in terms of filing and, and as Mr. Rao rightly said, otherwise we would never begin. So somewhere we have to start, you know, the net practice, what we talk of, somewhere it has to begin. So I, I think in the days to come, yes, we will hear more from the government extending certain relaxations. Sure. Uh, you know, just on that point, and I'll, I'll toss it back to Bupin, uh, Rohan Shah, you know, within the ambit of the law, and this was the, the chat I had with the Revenue Secretary, I asked him that you have decided now to provide certain relief by way of extending the time period for the returns filing, but what about things like penalty, for instance? Could you consider waiving penalties for the first six months, given the fact that people are just getting used to this? He said that, well, that is a provision in the ambit of the law, but we don't want to tell people that we're going down that road. But do you believe that... Uh, you know, given the responsiveness that the GST Council has shown so far, we could perhaps see more relief and more relaxation as the implementation takes place. I think so. I think, you know, every signal for me uh, is a signal from government to say we want people to participate, but we are not going to police them very hard. Uh, you see the approach in terms of Mr. Adia has said very clearly that, you know, we will not look at penalties unless it is gross fraud. And obviously, as a nation, we don't want to condone gross fraud. So if it is technical, if it is interpretational, I don't think they are going to come down on people with penalties. And he's been candid about it. The second situation is I don't think I have seen a tax administration this proactive in terms of trying to address issues or answer queries. Or even if you see, some of the best written inputs have come through the government advertisements on what the law is. So they are taking a step forward, A, to educate, but also to be, you know, hugely responsive. The third issue which I am seeing articulated uh, on the panel is, what will happen when we get to the state administrator, and you know, you can have 30 interpretations, it could be mayhem. To me, the answer is not GSTN. To me, the answer is the sort of chemistry we've seen in the GST council. That council will subsist. If they continue to say, that we will support and be cohesive as a unit, even in the administration phase, that center and state will work together even in the administration phase, I think that may be your answer. Because when they've come together in the council, A, they've achieved a lot, there has been no dissonance. If that chemistry can be replicated for the next one year, even in tax administration, I think that's where you have a winner. And I think it's imperative that that chemistry is actually multiplied and extended. I must also point out that actually one of the people who had strongly objected to GST network sharing was the BJP's Raj Sabha MP. So we went yeah, to yeah, the extent of, yeah. of go to court on, on, on that one. But let's let, let, let's give it to a short break. Uh, the lots of questions to be raised out of Jeevan Narasimha on the other side. Congress's criticism that this is nothing else but an attempt being made by the Bharatiya Janata Party somehow to take full credit and convert this into a massive marketing exercise. Is that the reason why this midnight session is being organized? As you dive into the break, Deepa Balakrishnan is there in Bengaluru. Deepa, a lot of people suggesting there could be confusion starting tomorrow morning in terms of goods, in terms of services. Is that the sense in the, in the IT capital there in Bengaluru? Completely. In fact, I have two traders with me. One of them is, a, uh, is the head of the Wholesale Grain Merchants Association, Food Grains Rice, which is a staple in South India, certainly is going to get costlier purely because packaged goods, we're told, is going to be more expensive. Mr. Lahuti is first coming to you. Uh, uh, well, how do you see uh, uh, things affecting your work tomorrow? I believe you also have a backlog of stocks in your own go-down, yeah. which is going to suffer. Uh, so because we are basically food grains, uh, pulses, rice, it's a staple diet in Karnataka and it was zero uh, percent. Now we are in the name of branded and unbranded, we are going at five percent. And government in one hand in the Lok Sabha they said food items will be zero. And their advertisement if we say it will say loose dal. Now they are saying packed. You see in the don't fool Indian citizens. Or I can say straight out to the government, don't fool Indian public because rice and dal, branded quality, everyone buys, everyone wants a good quality. So it is going to five percent increase from the first step. And I'm more concerned in the food sector is that we, though government has given Canada government, we have given GST number, but the tomorrow how to bill, what are the procedures trading community 50% of the wholesalers and about 70% of the retailers are not ready in Karnataka which is the IT hub 
You should understand. He is not even ready to extend that all these traders are computerized. Uh, Mr. Rao Muta here is a textile merchant. Sir, tell me, how, I, I know the textile industry actually had a shutdown or a bunk yeah. today. We have strongly protested against the 5% implementation uh, for GST taxes. Roti and kapda being the very essential for the human race, you cannot tax uh, such things at 5%. And moreover, we are not against GST. We are against implementation, the way it has been done, uh, without any prepared in, uh, preparedness. And... Uh, People should be trained, given uh, all infrastructure in place, there should be a lot of training programs and all. Countries like Malaysia, which are very small uh, compared to India, they have taken uh, programs and uh, interviews and uh, information sessions for so more than 600, 600 uh, 700 hours every month for continuously 4-5 years before implementing GST. Ours being a very small, uh, huge nation with l large number of small traders, these kind of acts uh, will just wipe out all the small traders and uh, business interests like uh, small people and all. You just cannot... Uh, do appeasement po politics in name of GST for big corporate sectors and all. So execution you worry will be will be as ineffective as demonetization execution was? Yeah, certainly. How demonetization in the, it was forced on the people of India. Same thing, that was a different issue. But here we are going for a taxation. It's a huge one nation, one tax they are talking about. So to make this, they should give us uh, uh, softwares, then we should uh, implement and give training, impart. So as you go on small Kirana shop or something, the government might say anything, but we are not ready because they have to buy computers first. What government are you going to do tomorrow? How are you invoicing? No, see, our invoice is not ready. 50% of the traders' invoicing is not ready tomorrow. We don't know. That's why we have said we are not uh, doing any transaction tomorrow. We'll wait and watch for five days. Then only we'll operate. Some of them are going to... two weeks you will begin to implement the largest tax overhaul in your country's history. Well, first of all, they made enormous progress. The monetization, the, the, the good and services tax. To make fundamental changes on the good and services tax, which I do think is a game changer for India. You have to have the patience of how this occurs. So at the same time, you want to set audacious goals. We're all looking forward to the July 1st uh, rollout. I know it's been a very difficult thing to do, so I'm excited to see it happen. shows that, you know, you can achieve reform by pushing hard for it, and I hope it's just the beginning. Our global business leaders there, from JP Morgan's Jamie Dimon to Sundar Pichai of Google to John Chambers of Cisco, watching the rollout of the goods and services tax back home in India. But let me get in a quick word from GBL Narsim Rao, the spokesperson of the BJP. Sir, you know, just before the break, you heard traders there talk about the fact that, look, you've created this distinction between branded and unbranded. You're, in a sense, penalizing somebody for wanting to formalize his business, wanting to go the branded route. I know that the government's argument is that, look, if you take a registered trademark, then you can afford to pay a 5% tax. But think of it from a perspective of a small business owner, sir, and respond to the gentleman that you just heard. I think he was actually trying to mislead people of the country. Let me tell you, this country, this GST, under this uh, present GST regime, all agricultural commodities, essential commodities, attract 0% tax. Okay? And until, until today, many states were charging... Not if it's the branded, sir. Not if it is branded. Branded, no, branded the levy is 5%, sir. Please let me complete. Please let me complete. Until now... Until now, you were paying 20%, up to 20% tax on the agricultural commodities at the Mandi level itself, through various taxes, state VAT, purchase tax, then Mandi fees, all that put together, states were earning a massive revenue by, by hiking up the prices of agricultural commodities. Starting tonight, there will be zero tax on agricultural commodities sale or purchase at the Mandis. This is likely to... Uh, bring the prices down substantially to the tune of uh, 10 to 20 percent in different states. So therefore it's a big bonanza for farmers and consumers. 
and only a small section of the society which pays, which buys the branded uh, uh, ATA branded uh, uh, food products. I think a five percent is a small tax. Many of them, many of these companies which make these uh, branded uh, uh, food items, they have margins of over twenty-five percent. So when you are able to pay twenty-five percent margin on the on the on the raw product, on the prices of the raw produce, can you not pay a small? Five percent fee on it, a small five percent GST you know, on this. Can I, I can I just get Professor Gowda in on that one? The taxes have been. It's a bogus argument. Okay, okay, it's a bogus argument. It's a bogus argument according to him. But let me put it this way, sir. Are you not worried that by skipping this midnight session today, what is the message you're sending to the people of the country? Because the BJP obviously would like the country to believe that this is something which will put the nation on the high growth trajectory. The Congress, on one hand, saying no, we are with GST, but on the other, saying no, we are against this pomp and splendor which is being done in Parliament. Samad, are you not giving a wrong message to the people of the country? Not at all, Bhopin. Basically, you think about when this should have been passed. 2013, the GST should have come through, and the BJP obdurately opposed it, and we've lost what, six years? To score political points, you would no, have gone no, to Parliament, you would have it. told people that's in the country that you are not like the BJP, anyone, in opposition, you are a more responsible opposition if, party, you could have if, said if, that. You know, if you look at the 2% growth that is expected from GST when it finally settles in, that's, you know, 2-3 lakh crores. So 2-3 lakh crores into at least four years, mm -hmm. you know, 12 lakh crores is the loss to the country's growth because of the BJP opposition. 12 lakh crores. GBL, 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 it's okay. rather so the argument. We could have done it a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> the Congress could have been in 2014. In 2014 as well. Could have finished it much earlier if they had also. But Jimmy, uh, if I could, you know, I, I, I just, I just want to, I just want to understand the symbolism behind this midnight session. You know, there are many who believe that this could have been done in a regular session of Parliament. Session could have started during the day. This midnight, this obsession with midnight session. What is this midnight session all about, GVL? I think we seem to have lost that line with okay. GVL Nasima Rao. He's probably on his way now on to parli parliament. Pa parliament uh, to <coughs> he is true. Can Go I? Ahead, can I? Can. GVL, if you could hear me, you know there are many people, many of our viewers want to know: is there is there a political message behind the government's move of doing this midnight session? Is it is it like a marketing exercise? No, but it's it's a it's a it's a historic occasion. And therefore, it really befits this occasion to have a special session of this nature because we are becoming, as I said at the start, we are becoming one economic union today. We were not until today. And uh, the repeated criticism of the Congress party, I think, uh, let me answer this. This, is, this. this was not passed during the UPA regime. I think the, the, the blame must be laid uh, squarely at the doorstep of Mr. Chidambaram and the Congress party. We have adopted a flexible approach and they wanted to adopt a big daddy approach. They wanted to thrust it on, on states, which they were not prepared to do. So therefore, I think the blame has to be laid at, at their own doorstep. And uh, they did not even pay the CST compensation to the tune of 35,000 crores, which we began paying after we came to power. So they lacked cr credibility, they lacked legitimacy, and they lacked flexibility. And they can blame nobody for this uh, uh, except themselves. You're being, you're being converted into an irrelevant political outfit. The BJP right? lacks competence. They lack yeah. empathy for the traders and the we, small we, person. We, they, we, they, they lack empathy for the economy and its growth. I Unfortunately, so. today's grand special tamasha, huh. which is what this midnight session grand is all about. Grand special tamasha. Uh, that's what name. it is. Yeah. Grand special tamasha. That's all, all it is. That's we, all it is. Drama. We, we, uh, we, we, could, we could go back and forth between GVL Narsema Rao and mm. Rajiv Gowda till at least midnight tonight, but that's not the aim and the intent. The intent is to inform and educate our viewers of what's changing come midnight tonight with the goods and services tax being ushered in. Uh, so, Jimmy and Nasim Arao, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 80. Thanks very much for your time. Let me bring in a, uh, another important voice from industry, Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, the Chairman and Managing Director of Biocon, joins us. Kiran, thanks very much for joining us here. Uh, what, about two hours to go now for the rollout? Uh, all set to go? Well, as a company, we are all prepared. But, you know, what really worries me is that the rest of the, uh, you know, supply chain is not quite prepared. I mean, you're already hearing, uh, you know, very, very uh, nervous and worrying signs from pharmacists, from stockists, 
uh, and and the you know the the pharma supply chain that they are not quite prepared and they don't seem to be even prepared in terms of their uh, IT backbone uh, in terms of having that uh, the, the the required IT capabilities to deal with uh, GST and I think a lot of them are even saying that the formalities involved are so complex that they are really worried about whether they can cope with it. So I'm really, really concerned that, uh, uh, you know, I was so enthusiastic and such a strong advocate for GST because I thought this is one game-changing, bold economic reform that could silence all the critics of the government for being slow to bring about economic reforms. And yet today we seem to have squandered that opportunity because uh, we made it so complex. Why did we have such a multi-tiered uh, approach to GST? You know, GST has been a game changer in many, many economies where they have one single tax slab. I mean, look at uh, Singapore has a 10% GST, UK has a 20% GST, and I thought that we would have an 18% uh, tax slab and, you know, 18 or 20% and that was it. Okay, you could have had a two slab at the most, you know. But to have so many levels of slabs, so many complications, I mean, having these ridiculous subsectors such as non-AC, you know, AC, I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, what have we done? We have simply gone and looked at our old tax, uh, tax structure and tried to kind of accommodate that tax structure under the guise of GST. That's the way it appears to me. And so I'm happy that at least Mr. Hasmukh Kardia is saying that we will get to a two-slab structure sooner than later, but I hope it's sooner, because otherwise we are squandering this GST opportunity. You know, the Chief Economic Advisor called it the GST Nirvana, except that we don't know when or how soon we're going to be headed to the GST Nirvana of this tax rate convergence that you're talking about, Kirma Zumda Shaw. But you said that you're very concerned because at your company level you're okay, but as far as your ecosystem is concerned, you feel that they're not prepared. What are the specific concerns that are being raised? What's the feedback that you're getting, for instance, from your supply chain, from within your ecosystem? Well, the feedback is I wish they had made it less complex. You know, I think I saw all the complexities and the, uh, the details only very recently because all this time I thought that, you know, everything was going to be done in a very simplistic way. Now everybody is talking about the bureaucracy involved, the number of form fillings that is going to be involved. It is much more complex than the previous uh, kind of uh, tax systems that we had. So I think people are very concerned. Maybe hopefully, and I'm just keeping my fingers crossed, but that maybe all these concerns are unfounded and maybe it's going to be much simpler, but that's a wish, okay? I think we have to see what is, what is going to happen over the next quarter or two. Uh, to me, that monitoring process is going to be extremely important from the Ministry of Finance's point of view, and they must not be in denial. They must not try and, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, you know, take that approach that all is well because I do think they need to monitor the situation very very carefully and wherever something needs to be responded to very rapidly they must do it because otherwise you know you will find that large sectors of the business world is going to be impacted I don't think companies are, like ours are going to be impacted because a first and foremost our our uh, you know sort of business relies very little on the domestic market but uh, I, I know that a large number of companies that are so dependent on the domestic market are already very concerned. And I don't think big companies are going to be that impacted, but the smaller companies, the smaller players, the traders okay, are the smaller companies, the smaller players will be impacted, the traders will be impacted, and you hope that the finance ministry will be responsive in taking this feedback on board. But again, I, I want to ask you if you can quantify for us, uh, Kiran, based on the anecdotal feedback that you're getting about the kind of hit that we expect in the immediate term. Well, we've seen a huge impact on our business this month, okay? Our business has dropped by more than half, okay, for this month because our stockists are refusing to stock. Uh, the supply chain is uh, also uh, not willing to basically accept material. 
and they're all saying let's wait for the GST to be implemented. So we have seen a huge impact on our business. And as I mentioned to you, our business is very small in, in the domestic market. But those pharmaceutical companies who are totally dependent on the, uh, on the domestic market are seriously impacted. I think they've all said that. And if you, you know, judging by all the comments that are being made by pharmacies and stockists, uh, on television, I can see that every one of them is impacted and I think the bigger impact is the uh, drug shortage that patients are going to f face. Then they are going to have a huge impact on the price of drugs. You know, there is going to be black marketing, uh, black marketeering of drugs. I mean, those are the kind of things we have to be worried about. Uh, but but why, would, why would you say that there is going to be a black market for drugs, Kiran? Because of the shortage that is going to be created in the near term. Stockists are not willing to stock in their pharmacies because they feel that till they get clarity and till they understand what it's all about. Many of them said that they are not even prepared to roll out GST because we don't have the required software and IT systems to support it. Now that is very scary. So the small guys don't have the software and the IT support required to roll out GST. Now that is very scary for um, the pharmaceutical sector. Well, there are concerns and we hope that some of those concerns that you have raised here on the program will be addressed. Kirma Zumdar Shaw, the Chairman and Managing Director of Biocom, thanks very much for joining us here on our special broadcast. Voices from industry there weighing in on what the GST is going to mean. There will be uh, teething issues and some concerns there being raised by Kirma Zumdar Shaw. We are going to take a break, but a lot more when we continue here on our special broadcast. Remember, we're live here from our GST headquarters well past midnight till about 1 a.m. this morning. So come back to us after this very short break. So now, all those concerns which are being expressed by Kiran Majum Dasha are going to be answered by the Power Minister, Piyush Goyal, who has spoken extensively to us, just allaying all those fears which are being expressed by, by, some of, uh, by, by some of the leading lights of Indian industry. Also time uh, for us to thank Ashok Malik and Professor Gaurav. We'll, we'll have more panelists on the other side of the short break. join the GST regime, uh, there will be a complete trade isolation. The 75 lakh person has to have an ERP. This is going to lead to Inspector Raj. 96% of our uh, assessees are already on board GST. The tax rates are not going to be So I think that will be grey market. To छोटी भी त्रुटि रह जाती है तो उसको जीएसटी काउंसिल के माध्यम से दूर किया जाएगा जीएसटी रेट ऑन फर्टिलाइजर्स वाज रिड्यूस्ड फ्रॉम 12% टू 5% द न्यू सिस्टम इज प्रॉपर्ली इन प्लेस नोबडी विल हैव टू लुक बैक Well, just about two hours to go before the action shifts to the Central Hall of Parliament where we will see the Prime Minister, the President, the Finance Minister, the Vice President uh, take the stage for the rollout of the Goods and Services Tax, the official launch at midnight tonight. We've been getting you reactions from across the spectrum, from policy to politics, from the economy to tax experts. Joining us now is a member of the GST Council and the Finance Minister of the State of Kerala, Mr. Thomas Isaac. Mr. Isaac, appreciate you joining us here on uh, this special Network 18 broadcast. Uh, you're not going to be in Parliament, Mr. Isaac. Why have you decided not to go? <laughs> One, uh, I do, I th certainly GST is a very important tax reform, but not of an order to have a midnight session uh, recalling the days of 1947 and so on. Uh, that's a propaganda partly political propaganda. I don't want to be caught. Uh, is that the problem, Mr. Isaac? Is that GST the only problem that you have? That this is, as you called it, propaganda and hence, hence your hesitation to attend the GST uh, session in Parliament tonight? 
And that's uh, reason number one. Reason number two is, I don't think these are times for any celebration, even if it is for GST. At a time when lynching of people has become a kind of common occurrence uh, because you belong to a different faith, is um, really obscene. I don't, I feel disgusted to join the parliament to celebrate GST or anything for that matter. But Mr. Isaac, don't you think that, you know, you're missing the wood for the tree, sir? Because on one hand you say that, you well, you support the idea of GST, but, you know, on the other you're simply opposed to this, this midnight session, this obsession, you know, that a lot of opposition parties seem to be having against the government's desire of having this midnight session. What message will you send to the people of the country? Will people of the country not think that you all are completely opposed to the idea of GST, though in principle you seem to be oh. supporting it? You know, people won't think like that because we are responsible for governing state governments and we are implementing this program here. We have been party to it. In fact, discussion started, do you know when? 19, 2009. Since then the discussions have been going on. And political parties, including BJP, has taken positions. We know very well. In fact, the entire enterprise of GST was scuttled in 2011 because BJP decided to oppose it. In fact, they stonewalled it for the next so five credit. years. Is it now about, is it about you know, on GST. one hand you say and that the country has nothing to celebrate because night. of these lynchings which are going on. On the other hand, you say that this is, this is just about the government trying to, you know, to score some political points, trying to portray itself in... In, uh, in, 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 a, in a proper color, is your reluctance at the end of the day only and only with Prime Minister Modi, with the BJP, is that the reason why you boycotted this? <clears throat> Look, we have been cooperating with the center and other states to formulate the GST, roll it out. But now what is this drama of midnight? Tell me, I don't think GST is as fundamental a change as that introduction of VAT to us, really. In fact, GST I consider an extension of VAT across the state boundary. Uh, therefore, or you, in the in direct tax code for that matter. So there have been nodal points in the evolution of Indian tax system. This is yet another important one. But to make a drama of it to this scale is certainly a political propaganda. Mr. Isaac, Mr. Isaac as, you, as you said uh, that you, don't want, you didn't want to attend this session yes. because you believe that this is propaganda and drama. But let me now talk to you about substantive issues, sir. Uh, one issue that requires clarity uh, from the GST Council is how responsive will the GST Council be? The view from the ground is that, look, we expect the GST Council to be flexible, we expect the GST Council to be responsive, and it's going to be crucial and critical for the GST Council to act hastily, given the fact that you will get feedback in real time from the ground on the implementation itself. So explain to us, sir, how responsive will the GST Council be uh, in the implementation phase of the GST? Well, members of GST Council are finance ministers of various states and the union government. And uh, they are elected people, they are responsive to the people, and therefore a council consists of such a diversity of political opinion drawn from all states in India um, and of very different experiences and so on, cannot but be responsive to what is the reaction from below. And therefore, if you look at, for moment, example, sir, can I just hold you for a uh, moment? Can I just hold you for a moment, Mr. Isaac? You know, because there is some breaking GST. news that we're getting. There is some breaking news we're getting, sir, that uh, former Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, and this is the view which is coming from the MOS Finance, Santosh Gangwar, who's spoken to our correspondent, Arunima. And Mr. Gangwar has told our correspondent that Manmohan Singh, former Prime Minister, is going to attend this GST session, despite the fact, despite the fact that there is, there is a boycott. 
There is a boycott which has been announced by the opposition, but Manmohan Singh Mishri. Well, then did this will confirm what GVL Narasimha Rao was saying that there's confusion within the Congress party. If indeed uh, the former prime minister does attend, because remember the invitation was given to former prime minister Manmohan Singh uh, by the finance minister, saying we would like him to be on stage when the GST rolls out. So that, if you're but saying, but yeah, you know, I mean that that's the view which is coming with Santosh Gangwar. But the truth is also this that Manmohan Singh yesterday had officially sent a letter of regret mm. to the Prime Minister's office and to the Lok Sabha Secretary saying that he will not be attending. That was Manmohan Singh yesterday. So let's, just trying to figure out so, so whether he's really going to let, attend. Let's just wait to see if the former Prime Minister is going to attend. But coming back to you, Mr. Thomas Isaac, uh, in terms of the responsiveness of the GST Council, today in the meeting of the GST Council, you've seen another rate revision. You've brought down the rate on fertilizers uh, to 5%. Uh, is, what is the possibility now of more rate revisions, sir? You've got a lot of representations coming in from industry. Are we expecting rate revisions maybe within the first fortnight of the implementation of the GST? I do not think any overhaul of the rates. All the rates have been reduced substantially. If you take the incidence or tax in the pre-GST regime, and the present one, that incidence of tax in 90% of the commodities have come down. Now take the case of fertilizer. There were other many considerations to be made. The first consideration is that the embedded tax in fertilizer is much more than 5%. And therefore you reduce it to 5% would mean the state governments will have to refund the manufacturers. Well, that's the decision that we have taken. Because 12% tax on fertilizer, well, it was uh, not getting good reception among the farmers, and therefore council could took a positive view about it and made the decision, you see. But it's not a symbol of the thing of playing around with the rates. One, you have to take, have a calculation of the existing pre-GST rates. And that's very difficult because rates differ from state to state and therefore you have to calculate a weighted average. That's calculation number one. Calculation number two, you have to look at the tax embedded, the tax that was paid for the raw materials so that would go to make fertilizer or whatever. So th these two calculations are taken and a rational decision has been made. Now still there is option for public opinion and some of the rates will be fine-tuned. I don't think there will be basic change in the structure of rates at all. For a moment yeah, because sure. you know because uh, CNBC TV is running these flashes that former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh is indeed going to attend uh, this function. So Madhu Yakshi Gaur, spokesperson of the Congress party is here. Madhu, is there is there clarity? Santosh Gangwar and this is Santosh Gangwar, MOS Finance, he's saying Manmohan Singh is attending. Manmohan Singh last night had sent a letter of regret that he is not attending. Can you throw some clarity whether he's attending or not attending? Well. Uh, I just came in, but I, I'm not aware of it, honestly speaking. So, uh, as far as the Congress Party is concerned, Manmohan Singh is not attending? As of now, yes. As of now, he's not attending? Yes. Okay, so that remains, that, that should that's, be the main That's, that's my instruction so we should just correct. So, we should just correct the flashes which are there on, on the screen. Well, so. uh, uh, those are attributed to the Minister of State for Finance, Santosh Gangwar. So, maybe he's got it wrong, we don't know. But yes, uh, it's absolutely right that till we uh, have absolute certainty on this, uh, uh, we will continue to try and get a confirmation on that. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Isaac, before I let you go, sir, uh, you know, what is the feedback that you're getting in the state of Kerala uh, from, you know, pharmacists? Uh, what are you hearing from the MSME sector in terms of preparedness, uh, in terms of being ready for the rollout? Uh, we were just talking to Kiran Mazumdar Shaw uh, and there were concerns that, uh, for instance, within the pharmacy space, there are issues on stocking and uh, we could see a shortage, for instance. Is there any feedback that you've got from the ground that corroborates that? Yes, there are a few issues, few sectors where people uh, felt they were discriminated, they were not given due consideration. Like, for example, SME sector, certain particular lines like plywood and so on, to Ayurveda manufacturers who thought uh, that classical medicine preparations must be uh, given, treated on a par with allopathic medicine. Three, the tourism people who thought the 28% tax on the highest uh, bracket uh, room rent 
was too high, uh, and so on. There were a number of such issues that uh, we felt, and uh, we have raised it in the council. We will consider it later. Um, um, but uh, there has been no outrage in Kerala. You see. see, if say, you are tra you are transforming existing tax regime, which varies from state to state, and a national average is made, there will be always term states on some is uh, sunk, uh, issues which will suffer a higher tax, others lower tax, and therefore there would be the naturally certain. Um, conflicts of interest, um, it's not a very, thing, very you're, surprising. You're, you're right that we will probably see those those issues in the implementation phase, but uh, Thomas Isaac, the Finance Minister of Kerala, member of the GST Council, they're saying the GST Council intends to be responsive and uh, will look at revising rates if at all it is necessary. It's, if it's absolutely necessary, the Council will take up uh, rate revision even in the future. Thanks very much for your time. But let's go across now to our colleague Sapna Das outside Parliament uh, getting ready for the big event. Sapna, what's going on? Definitely the, the historic moment is just around the corner and everybody is excited about it. Of course, there's lots of, lots of politics also going on on the subject as to who's coming and who's not coming. We have been hearing all the guests on the channel. Well, having said that, the GST Council uh, had its meeting and the Prime Minister was there for a couple of minutes. Uh, I suppose around 10 odd minutes and uh, then he left. Uh, uh, we have heard all the state finance ministers speak about the outcome of the meeting. Of course, the finance minister also made certain statements earlier to that. So in terms of the big decision, uh, uh, we already have all of that that's been pointed out in terms of the fertilizer aspect. Uh, here, very clearly, the Haryana finance minister also noted that had the 12% rate on fertilizers continued, then the bag of urea, you know, the cost would have gone up by at least 30 rupees per bag. So that's quite substantial. Uh, we we do know for sure that uh, you know Punjab also has voiced this concerns. So that as of now remains to be remains sorted. There was also another smaller issue. Say for example, exclusive parts, uh, ex exclusive component of tractors. So there is a bit of a confusion on that front. Uh, you know that decision, what we understand, has actually been deferred for the next meeting. Also, state finance minister are very clearly indicating that now the meetings will be held every month, but they'll be held every Saturday, and the first meeting is going to be held uh, the first Saturday of the month of August. August. So most likely the month of July is going to be a month of implementation, of monitoring, of watching, observing. Uh, you know, the centre will be playing a very crucial role in terms of responding to any emergency challenges, so to speak. And, uh, you know, uh, even, even on the matter of rate revision, absolutely, it's totally open right now. For example, Maharashtra Finance Minister pointed out uh, the issue of textiles, you know, on, on, the, uh, on the rate on fabric. They want it probably to be in the 0% bracket. Uh, uh, Meghalaya pointed out uh, about handlooms. Uh, you know, some other states have raised some other concerns. So this is going to be an ongoing exercise, at least uh, starting to the month of August for the next three months. We will see all these decisions, all these, uh, you know, uh, things coming up, all these aspects coming up. Very quickly in terms of rules, three to four rules were expected to be finalized. What we have understood is that some amendments have been made to the rules on compounding, so that probably has got cleared. And, uh, of course, the eBay bill, as was clarified in the previous GST Council meeting, that will take around three to six months to shape up, so state governments have been given their own discretion, uh, you know, to keep uh, a kind of a transitory mechanism ready. In the Sapna, meanwhile. maybe we let you go. I'm told that Amitabh Bachchan, Lata Mangeshkar mm -hmm. and the who's who of India today are going to be attending that ceremony. Maybe you should be going inside Parliament and, and you know, and giving us minute-to-minute uh, -minute details of what's really happening inside Parliament. But the focus remains on Manmohan Singh, Santosh Gangwar dropping a bombshell of sorts going on record saying Manmohan Singh is attending, but there is no clarity. Typically, with most things, Congress, there is never any clarity. There is always confusion. Man who hopefully is not, confu not confused is, is Madhu Yakshi Gaur. Is the Congress confused? Would you rather be there? Would you rather be inside Parliament today? Let me make it very clear, Bhupen. Congress is always consistent. She stands for consistency. Not confusion. The confusion is only with Mr. Modi. If you remember oh, the demonetization. He you calling him, he's confused. How? I, can, I would like to remind the nation what Mr. Modi said as a leader of opposition. GST lagu nai ho sakta jab talak taxpayers ka network, GST network ke saath milan nai ho sakta. Hmm. The same Modi, we are asking, the GST network, they're just called for a tender and given a time up to August, September. Jeevan Narsimhar was on the program a short while back and he was saying actually the difference between the Congress and the BJP, BJP's approach to GST is that the Congress was being very, very inflexible and the BJP is being very flexible. So BJP is 
put uh, it has managed to address all these concerns which you well, say the bharatiya jota party jota led party by a jota leader the grand always, tamasha bharatiya jota liked. party i can see lots always of you always about it today. always like if i if i go on listing what all prime ministers said and not done it then the whole whole time is taken but for that but you know madhu i must ask you uh, union minister piyush goel is is going to be with us in a short while from now i, I must ask you that have you really gained anything by boycotting this session what is it with you got well in principle it is a congress who made the constitutional amendment and bought the is it just not opposition for opposition it's is not, it not the opposition, opposition for opposition no no we if you brought in the constitutional amendment no, you could have taken the credit that we always share behave, the credit we always behave at responsible <coughs> opposition unlike the bjp how they behaved in devran opposition mm. what we said it today the country the problems facing by the farmers the atrocities on women dalit minorities nothing has been ever discussed and why this tamasha all are about it what is this you just you are using this word tamasha consistently you are using is, the word it tamasha is, it is but here is a party here is a bjp which did demonetization you all ridiculed that you have too. seen you have you, seen you look seen. but you look what your happened you look what happened post you have channel shown the how demonetization ill prepared the atms were not programmed hundreds more than 100 people have died how much in, in problems caused the problem faced by the people of this country okay let me let me then go let me then go to union minister uh, piyush goel whom i had spoken to a short while back and uh, we began by asking mr goel union minister for par about the significance the significance mr goel of this big move which is being described as a tamasha by madhu gaur well i think uh, the indian economic history is getting transformed because for years and years we have had these multifarious taxes cascading effect of taxes that we have suffered we have suffered in our exports because we have not been able to really get a recompense for a several taxes which otherwise we have to pay consumers have no clue what is the real tax burden on them so at a series of taxes getting accumulated in the final price of the product 17 indirect taxes 33 cents all getting wiped out and one gst making trade and business so simple making it easier for uh, business and traders to or manufacturers to maintain records making it so much more transparent when we are doing business i think it's a great day for india tomorrow when it will be launched first of july will be a day of celebration also celebrating the federal structure of this country all political parties in the country getting together passing the constitutional amendment bill getting together and approving all decisions unanimously in the gst council all parties in different states uh, approving the necessary think cooperative federalism i think boy where is cooperative federalism cooperative and collaborative federalism in india sir where is cooperative federalism you are saying it's consensus cooperative federalism but look at what mamta banerji is doing the congress is opposing lalu yadav is also opposing you are being accused sir of taking credit from the congress party the congress started it you are only implementing it you are only interested in taking credit no but bhupendra in all our uh, statements in all our uh, activities we are involving all the parties so tomorrow we have invited honorable former prime minister manmohan uh, manmohan singh ji deve gowda ji to be on the dais with the honorable president and other distinguished uh, leaders so really we are not at all trying to take anything it's the success of the gst council it's the success of all the political parties and if at all we had to take the credit to ourselves we wouldn't be sharing the credit which we are doing across the country with all uh, people of india so i think if at all they feel that we are taking away the credit then all the more reason they should participate and share that credit with us which we are obviously trying so would you would you use this platform actually once again to make an appeal to opposition parties you know still still an art go not to boycott this uh, this special parliament session yes why not uh, through you i am happy to make an appeal to all leaders of all parties all members of parliament all leaders of different political parties should join in share the celebration enjoy the fact that india is moving into a new orbit of transparency a new orbit of a corruption free harassment free regime for traders and businessmen and manufacturers i have been in business myself i have suffered the agony of so many different tax departments so many records to be separately maintained for each 
You know, you used to reach the factory in the morning, and if there was a white ambassador with central board of excise and customs written on it, you used to wonder, will we go home and sleep tonight or no? Now all of that is over. We have a regime which will be largely system driven. Everybody only needs to enter their sales invoices honestly. You enter your sales invoice, everything else is taken care of by the system. But all you have to do is enter the sales invoice honestly. System does the rest. Pay your taxes on all your sales. Sleep peacefully. There can be no scope of Now, action. you know, Mr. Goyal, you say that you know business quite well. The other person who certainly has been dealing with business is the West Bengal Finance Minister, Ramit Mitra. He's spoken to CNBC TV 18 and he's making it very clear that this is not working. I'll just, I'll just correct you. Before you go further, I'll just correct you. He has been in some industry associations. He has not actually gone and run a factory. He has not actually seeded a factory. He has not been an entrepreneur. So his information is relevant to the large trade, or, uh, uh, the large organizations which he represented in the trade organization. Right. Mr. Goel, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Goel, for taking time out for CNN News 18. Well, Madhu Yakshi Gaur is here. And uh, Ajay Alok, of uh, the JDU, is also there with us. The JDU, which is being described as the backstabbing opposition. You know, you've ditched the opposition, Ajay Alok. You're there on the side of the NDA. Madhu Yakshi Gaur says no question of attending such a celebration because there's nothing to celebrate. The Kerala finance minister was also saying nothing to celebrate. What is it about the Janta Dal United, about Nitish Kumar, that, you, that you're seeing? You must be on the same page as the government, unlike the opposition parties. Well, I guess along with JDU, there's NCP also, there's Samajwadi party also, who are joining the celebrations. And let me remind you, Bhupender, we were the first party in 2009 when Congress bought this and we supported it wholeheartedly. And since 2009 till 2017, there is only again one party which has been consistent on GST, that is JDU. Because when 2009, when Congress brought it, BJP was opposing it. And look at the irony of politics. The one who opposed to thin nail, they worked for the last three years. Arun Jaitley made a statement that I haven't done so much meeting right. for any cause for other than the GST. And today, and today they are getting it out. But Ajay ji, Ajay ji, you know, what is, what is happening out? I agree that A lot of people are asking me this question. A lot of people are asking me this question on social media, Ajay ji. That your alliance partner Lalu Yadav doesn't see any merit in what is being done by the BJP. You are implementing GST in the state of Bihar, but Lalu and Congress are your alliance partners. How will this then play out, sir? Am I, am I to read a little more? in this boycott of the session from Lalu Yadav and JDU's decision to attend this session? How should I be looking at it politically then? No, I will... First of all, this is not a question of opposition unity, number one. Number two, number two, if they are opposing it, I guess it is a symbolic opposition because they are, they are not interested in the fanfare and tamasha, whatever they feel, that it shouldn't symbolic be opposition. done like that. Let's, 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 let's get to respond to this. Not symbolic, it's systematic is a clear understanding why we opposed, we made it very clear. Not only this is Tamasha, but there are so many, as you showing on your own TV, mm. how the state councils were, finance ministers attended this GST council. But the, the made GDU, some remarks. Alliance partner in Bihar, you know, it, is, it, is it not true? Is it not true? That's the question that I was asking you. If someone like a Nitish Kumar also belongs to the so called opposition space, if Nitish Kumar is Bihar Chief Minister, can think in terms of being on the same side of the government, maybe because he believes that this is something which will help the country, could the Congress not have done that? Could we not have seen consensus on this occasion? Yeah, yeah I think the, you're taking it wrong or maybe trying to people take it wrong of we boycotting this GST, this today's special session. Mm. We are not per se opposed to the GST bill. The GST bill was passed unanimously. Please recollect that. Mm. It is Congress insistence brought to the taxation to to an 18 percent and above and one percent about 18 percent now what they promised Arun Jetli now is going to 8 28 percent the different tax structure which is showing the even uh, Piyush Goyal I wish he could is a is an auditor successful auditor if he would answer as an auditor okay is it helping to the people or not uh, so we well, are a democratic party Fine. well well one JDU. Says, let's just uh, uh, bring in the former Prime Minister Deve Gala, who is in fact attending uh, uh, this special session uh, that's been called by the government for the launch of the GST. Here's the former Prime Minister in conversation with our colleague Timji Jaipuria and we'll be back.
I have, I have Mr. Devagoda with me. Sir, uh, how do you see this moment? Because you are a special dignitary here, you are a special invitee. How do you see this? I don't feel any special... Uh, say, Sir, a little louder, please. I am not seeing anything special. Only uh, the GST is going to be launched today. That is the only so how do you special. see the reform? Because the NDA government had first uh, introduced this. UPA government is introduced, Madam. Huh? UPA was introduced. Hi, sir. So not saying too much there uh, in that chat with Kimzi Jaipuria who's trying her level best to try and get him to say something that's meaningful. But uh, let's, let's move away from politics for just a bit and then let's get back to our tax experts now because remember uh, at the stroke of midnight there is going to be a big change when it comes to compliance. And let me start by asking each of them to take our viewers through what they believe should be the Ten Commandments uh, as far as GST compliance are concerned. Rohan Shah, let me start by asking you what are the the do's and don'ts, what is it that industry and the small and medium sector enterprises must keep in mind uh, in terms of compliance? I guess your first issue really is in terms of your registration and uh, either you already registered or there was a window open from the 25th of June, you have another 30 days, so you need to be registered. The second is you must have enough details to make up your invoice, so the your form could be the form of your choosing, but the information must be such uh, as sort of fits in with what is required in the GST. So that's the second imperative. The third situation is transitional credit being the sort of issue it is. Uh, you will have to ensure that you make a demarcation between those goods where you have duty paying documents, those goods where you don't have duty paying documents, because each of those has a different significance in terms of how much transitional credit you will effectively get. In most so cases... On the issue of transitional stock, Mr. Shah, if I could just interrupt you and ask you, what is the kind of hit that you expect industry to take? There have been all kinds of numbers on the hit that the auto industry, for instance, could take on the transitional stock and so on and so forth. What is your own assessment uh, on the back of the feedback that you probably have got from your clients? Uh, and I'll ask each of our tax experts that. What could be the hit in terms of the transitional stock? So, you know, on transitional stock, I think the simple rule of thumb is effectively this. Uh, you're looking for transitional credit. One is in terms of VAT, and if it is a credit which you're carrying in your VAT returns, you will get 100% of that. Uh, as far as excise is concerned, you need to have duty-paying documents, and if you have them, you get 100% credit. If for some reason you don't have the documents or you don't show it on your return, uh, the situation is you will get a presumed credit and that presumed credit is sort of playing out in the context of 40% or 60% depending upon the rate. So if the rate applicable to the goods is 18% or more, you get a presumed credit of 60%. Uh, if that is sort of to be seen in the context of you know a different levy, then you will get 20% and 30%. So the facilitation is clearly stated. Each industry has a different impact. So as I sort of talk to people, you mentioned the auto as one sector. You know, there are others who will feel the difference. But I would sort of hesitate to give exact amounts in terms of, you know, what people will face. But yes, in many situations where stock is lying at the level beyond the first stage dealer, that is the risk because those are the people who don't have the relevant duty paying documents in the context of excise. So that quantum of stock is at risk because there you will only get proportional credit and to that extent you are going to have a credit burn. Okay, I think these are live pictures that we're getting from a central hall of parliament. Momentous occasion, the Congress is describing it as Tamasha. So you will perhaps see a lot of empty chairs as well today because the entire opposition... It looks like a, looks like a packed house at least uh, I, I, from, from the pictures that we have. I just spotted Hema Malini there. Well, Hema uh, Malini is there and, and, and you know, Shireen, it's also interesting perhaps to remind our viewers about some of the special invitees today. Yeah. I'm told Ratan Tata has been invited. Mr. Subhash Chandra of the Z Network, I can spot him there as well, Venkaya yes. Naidu. That's Mr. Nitin Gadkari that you can see on your screens. Uh, Telecom Minister Manoj Sinha in attendance there from the Neet 
Niti Aayog, you've got Vivek Debroy that I can spot uh, uh, as well. So the top ministers in full attendance, Shatrugan Sinha is there in parliament yeah. as well. Yeah, so you know, I mean, BJP MPs uh, may have some, some issues amongst each other, but when it comes to GST, well, it's a special session. I don't think that anyone in the BJP uh, would be thinking in terms of missing this event. There is Mr. Nitin Gadkari himself who looks upon himself as, uh, as a reform face off for the Bharati Janata Party and of this government. So therefore, I, you know, I, I come back to you, Madhu. You know, look at these pictures. While we're looking at these pictures, the festive mood. Yes, it's the ruling combine, be that as it may, but it is a big move which is being made. Don't you think maybe there was some other way? I mean, you all keep protesting against the government's move on a daily basis. But today, could an exception not have been made? Again, I'm coming back to the same thing, Bhupen. These are forced festive mood. Forced festive mood. It is. And <laughs> I mean, look at the smiles, many look at the, the smiles of the face of the wall ministers. Many of the BJP MPs also not attending, not even there. No, 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 no. Well, no, no. no let me, no, let me tell including, you. <laughs> including Subramaniam Swami, who's been a big critic of, of, of the GSTN. Let me, let me he's, assure he's you. He's right there let in Parliament you, also, Prime Prime Minister, sir. Minister, 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 Every MP and every minister has been asked specifically to attend this event. So I don't think that any BJP MP will be asked about. calling every opposition MPs also. Yes. They come to the Standing Committee meeting and attend this. They're begging every MP to come and edit it. As I said, this is a force to... Well, they're inviting you, sir. They're inviting you. I mean, uh, let, let, let's not, let's not, be said, let's not be uncharitable. Not let's, let's not be GST. uncharitable. But, uh, but as we, as we see... As I think, we see I think those, you know, you know, what's going yeah. to happen, just, yeah. just for the benefit of our viewers uh, who may be wondering as to how the evening will unfold, I think another 10 to 15 minutes time from now, I think the president will, uh, shall also arrive. There's a special stage which has been, uh, which has been created where all former prime ministers Including Manmohan Singh, if Manmohan Singh is if watching this broadcast... If Santosh Gangwar is right. <laughs> yeah, you know, if, if, he, if he is watching this broadcast... You think he is confused with Haluwal here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Santosh Gangwar is on record. I am pointing out he is on record to our correspondent Narunima that Manmohan Singh is coming. So it will be interesting to see whether Manmohan Singh also decides she need to, to ditch his own party. <laughs> well, well, come to this well, Thomas Minister Nirmala Sitaraman there. As these pictures continue to play out, uh, let's welcome uh, the former President of the Confederation of Indian Industry, Sunil Munjal, on the show. Mr. Munjal, thanks very much for joining us on the program, sir. Here we're looking at live images well, from, from, from Parliament coming in uh, uh, as, as, the, uh, as the government gets ready for the rollout of the GST. Uh, you know, everyone on the program has called it uh, historic, ambitious, uh, uh, the mother of all reforms, so to speak. What is it going to mean for India, sir, in the medium to long term? Um, so you're right, uh, Shreen, it is historic. This is the biggest tax reform in independent India. And it's also the biggest, single biggest move for ease of doing business, uh, business that India has implemented in a long, long time. Uh, industry has been asking for this for a long time. But there's also been confusion amongst trade, amongst small industry, about lack of clarity as to what it means for them. So from tonight, from midnight tonight, uh, I think large industry is mostly ready, but there is still a challenge to see how much of industry is actually able to switch over seamlessly to the new system. Key there areas of confusion that continue, Mr. Munjal. Well, what are the key areas of confusion? I think, I think the confusion will continue for a few months. Uh, one is about the kind of uh, reporting that you have to file. Uh, with the system, while the reality is it only takes 10 minutes every month. But the impression right now is that there are a large number of reports which have to be filled up constantly, which incidentally is not, not correct. Uh, also, many small companies have still not registered with the GST in the system. And uh, I was in Ludhiana a couple of weeks ago and I called some small companies to talk to them, and many of them didn't actually have a clue. So we called them in a group and spoke with them and tried to tell them what to do and called their chartered accountants who also were not aware, all of them. So through CII, through many other industry associations, we've been running programs to uh, try and coach, counsel and train people. But I suspect it's, it's not all done yet. Uh, I think we will really know in the so, next so few what? weeks how uh, what this kind transition of disruptive impact out. do you then foresee Mr. Munjal if you're saying that the ecosystem and the supply chain is not fully geared up to make the transition to make the switch over what kind of disruption do you imagine uh, at least in the initial maybe the first quarter 
So I think two or three things are happening. One is uh, people try to clear all the stocks they had up to tonight, so they do not have to account for them in the new system, and which obviously is not complete, never completely possible to, to clear out all the stocks. So there's some confusion, in, especially, and that I'm saying especially in small and mid-sized companies. Large companies are, are actually very well equipped. I have to say they've all registered, they've all filed, they've changed their systems, and their computer systems are uh, accommodate the new software. All, all of that is, is uh, in place. Uh, the issue is going to be, uh, as I said, your suppliers and your suppliers' suppliers in turn. Because if the entire system does not file uh, their return, the input credit is not available. And that is something they actually also faced when Malaysia switched over. And this was seen as one of the biggest hurdles. Fortunately, the system India has installed is very, very sophisticated. It is expected to, to do some 3 billion transactions yeah. every month. One, one question, and it's actually sir, quite we, we, well equipped One question to do which that. comes to my mind. But it's just the question of educating people. Jabe, uh, one question which comes to my mind, sir, mm -hmm. is this that there are many, many of our tax experts also have been here and, and you know, panelists earlier on the program, were pointing out that there is a big question mark about tax administrators themselves. What about that question? Do you believe that that's, that's something which the government needs to be aware about? Maybe plan that a little better? Uh, yeah, I think the training is required all around. It's not just industry. It's also the chartered accountant. It's also the, the administrators themselves. The revenue department uh, also needs to be fully trained as to how to handle new system. On the one hand, you have now one set of entries against a very large number of taxes that we had. So on one hand, it's, it's extremely simple. But the, I'm not sure the entire department has been trained uh, to transition to the new system yet. And also, by the way, you also have to handle things which are in transit right now. Things which you sent out today or yesterday and actually get to the customer a day or two later. So there is some confusion about some of these. While the government incidentally has put out all the answers, the, uh, the revenue department, the finance ministry and, and the, uh, what the uh, empowered group did was actually put out a series of FAQs, the questions and answers. But uh, I still find many, many Time. small companies still yeah, yeah. groping around to find yeah. you're, how you're to right, manage sir. So for the benefit, for the benefit of our viewers who are looking for answers as they make the transition, uh, let me get our tax experts to weigh in. Let, Mr. Lakshmi Kuvaran, let me start by asking you. We've heard this so many times, 37 uh, reforms and so on and so forth. In terms of compliance now, complexities related to compliance, what is it? Give us an accurate picture in terms of compliance when it comes to filing returns, payment vouchers, invoices. Give us the process, sir. Just remember one thing, sir. Prior to July, the same assessees were filing several several returns under several several taxes. First of all, they should thank their staffs that they don't have to do that. Mm. Second, once you properly prepare the invoice with all the fields that have been mentioned, you can devise your own invoice, no problem. Once you do that, then the returns are meeting, meeting, many of them are getting auto-populated. Yeah. So therefore, there is no difficulty. And even if you are going to have four or five states where you are going to operations, you can fill the returns from the one particular place. There is no difficulty. Mm. So therefore, the filing of the return, the number may look every month 3, therefore 3 into 12, 36 plus 137 annual return mm. may look like this, etc. Mm. But I think once you prepare your invoice properly and also match the corresponding invoice, invoice, etc., I don't think the file returns will be problem. Okay. Mr. Roida, would you agree that in terms of what uh, seems like very complex, uh, uh, it, once, because A, it's uh, auto-populated, a lot of the IT back-end will start to kick in, it's not going to be that much of a compliance burden? Well, uh, firstly, let me make some quick comments that uh, in terms of compliances, uh, of course, as we say, uh, you know, compliances are in two baskets. Today, if you look at goods, vis-a-vis uh, -vis services. Uh, services sector, for service tax, they were filing one return, which was half yearly. Uh, but in GST, they have to file monthly return. So from a service standpoint, yes, uh, the compliances would increase uh, month on month, uh, state by state, vis-a-vis uh, -vis in case of goods, it will reduce. But having said that, uh, you know, I concur to the views which uh, uh, were shared, uh, that there is an auto-population. And clearly the return which we have to file is only one return. Uh, but 
while we file only one return, there is an auto population which one has to check. Uh, there is a match, mismatch of data and so on and so forth. So initially, uh, certainly there would be thieving problems. And as, as we say that uh, the government is mindful of these thieving problems and I'm sure they would come up with certain solutions to encounter these challenges. So by and large, I would say for service sector, compliances would go up. Uh, overall, yes, there is an auto population which we would see. Okay. I think. Uh I, I think the, the quorum inside uh, inside the central hall of parliament certainly seems to be getting completed there. L.K. Advani also arriving and uh, sitting there right in the front bench next to Amit Shah, Sharad Pawar, L.K. Advani. So rather interesting side, just looking at that central hall, full of all government members but devoid <laughs> of the main opposition party, the Congress, the RJD, the Trinamool Congress, the left parties, all these parties deciding not to attend this function. The official part. The official ceremonies, in a sense, will begin, I think, in another 10 to 15 minutes' time from now, once the President has arrived. There is going to be a documentary which will be shown. Uh, that will be followed by speeches which will be made by the Prime Minister, by the President, and even the Finance Minister. So, get set, guys. This is a, according to the government, this is a historic opportunity. You know, Shri, according to have, the government. We, ha we haven't taken a break for a very long time, so a quick break. Uh, we're right back with you. The live images from Parliament continue. Our tax experts... Uh, I'm sorry, gentlemen, we've kept you waiting for very, very long already, and it promises to be an even longer night, so thanks very much for your patience. We're going to be right back with you in a moment. Well, it is the last lap, an hour to go before uh, we have the rollout of the goods and services tax. I think the Prime Minister is... Uh, is in Parliament now and about to speak uh, while well, he's arriving. Uh, he's had a busy day as well. There's Textile 2017 that's been on in Gandhi Nagar and the Prime Minister was there this evening uh, addressing uh, textile associations from the world over there in the state uh, of Gujarat in Gandhi Nagar and he has now returned and you know, there you can see. Sometimes yes. I wonder, you know, sometimes people say that a week is a long time in Indian <laughs> politics but I look at this calendar of Narendra Modi. Yes. You look at what all has been done by Narendra Modi in the last one week. You, well, he's making yes. you work hard too, <laughs> You know, there you were in Washington and there was a, there was a night-long coverage there from Washington, D.C. Now you're back. Prime Minister never, never resting, not one moment with Modi around. Well, those are lovely images there of Parliament, all decked up tonight. Uh, uh, what an imposing uh, picture uh, there on our screens, Parliament all Just while we're in those ready. pictures, while we're in those yeah. pictures, I know you want to go to Pawan Munjal, but Sanju Verma yeah, of uh, the BJP is, uh, is also there. Sanju, while we're looking at these pictures, you know, Parliament dressed up for the occasion. I was talking about Prime Minister Modi's calendar. You, the Congress would like us to believe that the GST is just like VAT. It's just another tax which is being added to India's kitty. What is, this, what is so special about GST that we have to have this midnight session today? Bhupen, I think you've got uh, enough tax experts on your panel and I've been listening to them as well and they've gone into the nitty gritties and the nuances of the, uh, you know, uh, whole uh, issue at hand. Uh, I would, uh, you know, uh, like to mention a couple of things. Uh, suffice to say that the Congress is suffering from persecution complex, uh, point number one. Uh, point number two, uh, for all those who believe that the GST is nothing but, you know, uh, central sales tax or value added tax or service tax plus a couple of other things, I think they couldn't be further from the truth because the fact of the matter is that the GST is a destination based tax. It's not an origin based tax. And I think by virtue of being a destination based tax, it automatically becomes more efficient, more transparent, more equitable and of course more progressive. I think the finance minister earlier in the day went on record to say that while the direct tax structure in India is progressive, the indirect tax structure has been regressive for decades. And I think uh, no uh, prizes for guessing that the Congress, which ruled for more than 60 years in the last 70 years of post-independent history, has to of course share the onus and the burden of... of Madhu Gaur is here of the Congress of party. Having of gone so he pointing out about Narendra Modi's statement when Narendra Modi was the chief minister of Gujarat. In opposition, what did Mr. Modi can say I about GST? Complete, uh, can I please complete, Bhupen? Yeah, yeah, one moment. Let, let, let's just listen. Listen. Let, 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 him, let him say Narendra what Modi's said statement in is, GST bill lagu nahi ho sakta jab talak taxpayers ka net data networked with the GST network. So how has that changed now? How has that changed? Can I, can I respond let, now? Let, let her answer. Can I, can I yes, respond? Please. Yes, please. 
Yes, let me know, you know, Bhupen, I think one thing which, you know, your audience and your view, viewers need to know, and I think Madhu God Yakshi needs to educate himself. This whole halabalu about, you know, the BJP having hijacked, uh, you it's know, sure. GST, which was Congress's uh, brainchild, I think the Congress was building castles in the air. Your idea is as good as its ex execution and implementation. So kudos to the Narendra Modi government we for making a snaky idea into something please that is workable to the today. Question. I am answering your question. Your please, please keep your patience. Hold your order. horses. Hold your horses, place. please. Bhupen, either you ask you him to speak or you allow me to speak. You extended the date to file the apply standard in August, September. Can I please respond? That itself shows that you are hill prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you are yeah, cumbersome yeah. fighter system. Mr. Madhu Gaur Yakshi, Mr. Madhu Gaur Yakshi, let me remind you that answer, when Chidamram initially moved in... Answer, don't make statements and comments. Bhupen, can I please... Yeah, 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 Sanju, Sanju, yeah, yeah, speak, speak, speak. No, 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 you speak, okay, respond, respond, Sanju, 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 Sanju respond. Let me remind Madhu Gaur Yakshi that when P. Chidamram initially mooted the idea of GST, when it was in its nascent stages, the biggest uh, opposition came from we none moved, other than Prithvi Raj Chauhan because you, you summarily removed the central excise duty and you, know, you replaced it with state value added tax, tax without tax thinking through how to formulate it. The Congress, the Congress is not in Parliament. The Congress is not in Parliament. Let's not speak over each other. Let's not speak over each you other. Know, so, Sanju Varma, you know, make your point. Me. Make your point. Go ahead. Yeah. Please so go my, ahead. Yeah, my couple of points are A, why this GST is different from what the Congress had envisaged and why it is workable. Shirin, point number one, compensation to states was always a thorny issue which Chidambaram always ducked. And this government has said for the next five years states will be compensated completely. Point number two, there was never any consensus during the UPA's regime about the dispute resolution mechanism. We have addressed that. Point number three, the composition of the GST council was always something which was wishy-washy and in grey during 10 years of the UPA. We have said the GST council is the best example of cooperative federalism given that states have a higher weightage at, you know, two-thirds and the central government at one-third. Point number four, for all those people who say that, you know, the GST and network is, you know, ill-conceived. How will it handle 3 billion invoices per day? Let me remind you, Shireen, I think you've been so long in, you know, uh, business uh, news channels. You know for a fact that in 1994, when the NAC started its cash market transactions, and in 2000, the derivative market transactions, everybody said, oh, India cannot handle, uh, you know, derivative transactions. And you and know I what? The time for you know what? Today we yeah, handle more than three lakh transactions a day. On the back burner for a while. Today we because handle more Pranam than Mukherjee. three lakh you know, crore of derivative transactions. President Pranam Mukherjee. President Pranam Mukherjee. You know, if he was, uh, if he was not the president, if he was, if he was still in the Congress Party, he may not have been there in Parliament. You know. <laughs> well, uh, but he's the president. Let, let, so let, 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 it is. It is time to move forward. It is not time to talk about the past. The past is the past. It is now time to move forward. Sanju Varma, uh, I, I'm going to come back to you, but let me bring in a quick word from Sunil Munjal, uh, who's also here with us, the former president of the CII. Mr. Munjal, as I said, that this is time now to move forward. Uh, it's not time to talk about how of the past. Uh, in terms of industry, sir, uh, what do you believe is going to be the impact? In a sense, we've seen a preponement of sales because there's been all of this heavy discounting, etc., that's taken place. What do you expect, at least in the first quarter, as far as the impact on industry post the rollout of the GST? So let me just take a step back and, and go beyond the immediate. Uh, I think the long-term impact of this is going to be absolutely profound and, and wonderful on India. Indian industry, Indian economy, Indian consumers, and Indian trade. And it will increase the total number of people who pay taxes in India. It will reduce the incentive of people to do business without invoicing, because if you do not get input credit, your goods will become more expensive, because basic raw materials come from large companies where tax would have been paid. So I think there, there are many perspectives to this. The other thing that's going to happen is overall business will become more efficient because right now you position warehouses, go-downs based on taxes of local states. You even uh, peg pricing for many products based on the local taxes. That will no longer be necessary. You will price and you will position warehouses to be the most efficient that the business requires. If the states are not tempted to put check posts back in, you will be able to send a truck with goods from Delhi to Mumbai in two days, which right now takes seven to eight days. 
the overall system will become significantly more efficient. And so, but as I said earlier, in the immediate short term period, we should expect some hiccups. We should be prepared. And we also don't know the impact on all the products yet. Because while the end rates have been announced, but what is the impact of the set-offs uh, in the value chain is not quite clear for some products right now. Uh, which is why, while the industry is telling telecom, insurance, and real estate, you need to bring prices down, they are saying, by the way, our cost may actually go up instead of going down. So some of the things are not quite clear yet. So we need to be a little bit patient because we are making a dramatic, dramatic change, uh, which I think is most welcome. Uh, many of us have been, have been pushing for this for a long time. Uh, in fact, I remember when we made the first recommendation in the Kelker committee, we talked of VAT, seamlessly switching over to GST, and including things like real estate and land transaction like so to take away any incentive for doing business without, without invoicing. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Munjal, we need to take a quick break before we actually start to see the, the proceedings in Parliament kick off. A quick break and we're right back with you. Welcome back. You're watching our continuing coverage here from our GST headquarters. Live images there coming in from Parliament as uh, the Prime Minister, the President get ready uh, to launch the goods and services tax. There is going to be an hour-long proceedings in the Central Hall of Parliament as we get closer to the rollout of the GST at the stroke of a midnight. Well, we've uh, also been joined here by our other guests, uh, Hari Shankar Subramaniam, Rajiv Dimri, uh, also joined in our tax panel. Uh, Hari, uh, you've been with us through several months now as we've tried to analyze and decode the GST. This is it. This is the final moment now. Goosebumps, nervousness. Uh, you're going to be up all night because your clients are going to be calling you. What are the questions that they're asking? Uh, like, I, like I told you, for tax professionals, it's our Shivratri. You know? And you know, for somebody, for, tax yeah, for, for, okay. somebody, for somebody like me who's been tracking this for the last near decade, I would say, you know, it, it's, it's quite amazing. It's, it's, a, it's actually a real day. And there are goosebumps, you know, and we might talk about the, the, the idealness of GST or not the idealness of GST, but the fact is it's happening, you know, and for once it's happening on a day where people thought it will happen. So there is, there is a definite, uh, I would say, cause of, uh, of, I would say panic, but a cause of concern. I know of people who are going to spend nights for the next two days, especially the IT professionals, because you have to do a cutover of all the ERP systems and do the testing. Mm. So I don't think real invoicing of supplies will start happening till Monday or Tuesday. Mm. Fortunately, it's a weekend. So that's going to be a beneficial aspect for many of the industry. Okay, can I just hold yeah. you? I think the finance minister is now speaking. The, the ceremony has begun, so let's just cut to parliament. All right, with that, the proceedings in Parliament conclude, and we've got, of course, our tax panel here ready and waiting. They've been with us through right, the course so of this very long point evening point uh, to take us through what the GST really means. The GST now being renamed there, there by the government. Uh, the good and simple tax is what the government has now decided to call the GST. That's the Prime Minister, uh, the Lok Sabha Speaker, Sumitra Mahajan, uh, walking the President out of Central Hall after the proceedings of the evening. Let's uh, start getting in quick reactions now. Hari Shankar Subramaniam, uh, you know, let's, let's talk about that. Good and simple tax. Catchy, he's trying to sell the idea to India. The question is, will it live up to that promise? Well, we've got to wait and watch. You know? I mean, is, is it the most ideal structure? May not. But is it the most pragmatic for India to have started with? It is, you know. So, so you've, got to, you've got to give it to give it to them that they did make it pragmatic. Mm. It was brought in with uh, a fair degree of consensus as far as the constitutional body of council is concerned. And to that extent, I think you should credit them with that. You know. And we'll have to wait and watch how simple it will be. You know, I just want to, I, I just want to pick up on one point. The Prime Minister, throughout the speech hearing, there were a lot of political references also. One of the points which I picked up is exactly what he had said on 8th of November when he announced the demonetization scheme, which was that this is going to be the ultimate pro-poor reform move. Mm. Now here in GST also he says it's the, the garib people of this country are going to benefit. How will GST help the garib people tell me? So, so I, I, I would interpret that remark in two ways, you know. A, if this is the tax which is going to bring efficiency in the tax system, mm. then fundamentally over a period of time the prices of goods and the return on investment from a point of view oh. of investment will become better. I, I, 
I'll just yeah. interrupt you for just one second, uh, Hari. We're now joined by the chairperson of India's largest uh, public sector bank, State Bank of India, Arundhati Bhattacharya, joins us. Mitch Bhattacharya, appreciate you joining us here uh, at the stroke of the midnight hour as India ushers in the good and simple tax. That's what the Prime Minister is calling it. Uh, I, I've already started getting SMSs from SBI, ma'am, saying that you can pay your GST online uh, via SBI. What does this now mean as far as the economy is concerned? Uh, what does it mean for State Bank of India? Uh, well, first and foremost, you know, our technology platform and also our internal processes, uh, they have already been tested and integrated with the GOI portal. I would also like to tell you that our internet banking platform, where this menu was made live after 11 p.m., it has already seen more than a thousand visits and about a hundred transactions already. Uh, most of these, of course, appear to be small value transactions where customers appear to be trying the system out. But it does show that there is huge amount of interest and enthusiasm. Uh, in the meanwhile, of course, our customer sensitizing programs, both in virtual, social, all other medias, as well as through town hall meetings, customer meets are going on. I think, of course, that it is an enormous uh, reform. As the Honorable Prime Minister said, it's not only a financial reform, but it's a social reform as well. And we can see that there is a lot of interest and uh, hopefully that this, is, this will be one of those, you know, the really seminal kind of reforms that is done in the country. Uh, Ma'am, you talked about the fact that you've already seen about a thousand visits to the page and about a hundred transactions being done uh, on SBI's uh, IT backend. Uh, you know, there are concerns on whether the kind of traffic that, the, that we could possibly see, whether the systems will be able to cope with that. How confident uh, do you feel about the IT system's robustness? Oh, I think we are very, very confident. You know, we have a lot of redundancy built in. Uh, we are calibrated for around 16,000 transactions per second. Currently, we don't do more than 6,000 transactions per second. So it's, uh, it's, we have a lot of uh, capacity, and I don't think it will be a problem. One of, one of the concerns which has been expressed by a whole range of voices on the program today has been that our tax administrators, our tax administration system is itself not ready. Do you buy that? Do you think that that's a genuine concern? Look, the fact of the matter is nobody really knows, you know, whether what they are saying is true or not. And it's always, uh, you know, easiest to uh, express apprehensions. Of course, there will be hiccups. Of course, there will be difficulties. But again, as I said a few days back, I think, you know, it's something that we'll be able to take in our stride. Uh, you know, recently, uh, during the demonetization, if you remember, there was a lot of, you know, talk about how difficult things will be. And even then, we had said from the banking system that we'll work through this and we are sure that we can get, uh, get across this. And we did it. So I think in this case, too, uh, let us not be so apprehensive. Let us go forward and try to see how things can be worked out. Problems will be there. I'm sure we cannot say that there will be no uh, roadblocks and no obstacles. But I don't think that they will be insurmountable. You don't believe that the problems would be insurmountable. But Ms. Padachari, specifically as far as the banking sector is concerned, uh, you know, one of the apprehensions is this business of multiple registrations. And the GST Council, unfortunately, uh, for the banking sector, the telecom sector, etc., did not provide that relief. So that stays as of today. What is it going to mean now in terms of ease of compliance, in terms of ease of doing business specifically for the banking sector and for your bank? See, the fact of the matter is this has to be addressed through IT. Uh, we have already registered ourselves in the various jurisdictions. It's a question of getting the right kind of IT in to enable us to pay the taxes in the right manner. Uh, we have been promised that uh, there will be an effort to ensure that there is a single, um, a single body that will actually do the assessments. If that is the case, then multiple registrations will not be that much of a difficulty. Uh, the main problem is we do not want to be assessed at multiple locations. Then it really becomes a difficulty. But that is something I think uh, we have been promised that they are looking into it as to whether a uh, body constituting of some people from the states and some from the center can be a single body for doing our assessments. 
So we hope to get that relief. Important. You're saying that that assurance has been provided to you by the government, but we don't know whether this mechanism is going to come into place anytime soon. But Ms. Bhattacharya, you know, the Prime Minister said that this is not just an ambitious tax reform. This is a very crucial economic reform. If I were to ask you what this is going to mean as far as the economy is concerned, what would you say? How would you explain the economic benefits of this to the viewers who are tuning in? Well, the first and foremost is, you know, in our country, the tax that, is, that comes from a limited number of people. In a country that is this large, 1.2 billion people, if you are going to have a tax-paying community that is very narrow, then it is very difficult to bring about development in the country. The wider the tax base, the lower can be the taxes. And the lower the taxes, the more efficient and the more competitive you will be throughout the world. And therefore, it is very important to get everybody into the tax net so as to ensure that there is no one class or no one set of people that are getting burdened more and more. And therefore, if everybody shares the burden, it becomes easy uh, in respect of, you know, bringing about the right kind of development, etc. in the country. Uh, so to that extent, this is a very, very, uh, what should I say, a, a path-breaking change that is going to happen. And we believe that uh, this will result in the medium term, not even in the long term, but in the medium term in bringing down of the taxation rates and better productivity and efficiency in the system. You know, there was demonetization, which was announced in the month of November, and now GST is a reality. If you were to look at both these big, bold moves in combination, what kind of an impact do you see happening on the Indian economy, on the Indian ecosystem in the short term? Well, one of the biggest impacts that this has done is bring out a lot of resources into the productive area. From the banking sector itself, I have repeatedly said one of the things that has happened is the amount of liquidity that we have got in the system. And we were thinking that much of this liquidity will drain out. It has not. Quite a bit of it is still in the system. So a lot of money that was actually sitting in cupboards and, uh, you know, in people's uh, drawers and purses, they have actually come into the system and can be productively deployed. The second thing is, of course, digital. And digital, the biggest uh, advantage of digital is that it leaves a train. And therefore, you can be sure that whatever is happening on the digital platform can be accounted for, can be audited, and therefore, you know, it is in the, I mean, it's not in a parallel economy, it's in the real economy. So to that extent, you know, the, the entire system becomes less corrupt becomes more accountable, becomes more transparent. So all of these are huge benefits actually for a society that is aiming to become a, a developed country in the, in the near term. These things I think are absolutely sine qua non and they need to be uh, available in a country that's aiming high. A final question, ma'am, but it's a two-part question. Let me start by asking you about uh, how you read the minutes of the Monetary Policy Committee, uh, because the members of the Monetary Policy Committee also seem to suggest that they were waiting to see the impact of the GST, and hence it was a wait-and-watch approach that they took in the last policy. Do you believe that we could perhaps be closer uh, to a cut in rates? And my second question, what do you see this doing to credit offtake? Do you believe that this is going to be disruptive in the short term because credit offtake continues to be very sluggish? Well, actually speaking regarding the rate cuts, we do believe that we are trending towards one. Our inflation trajectory, whatever we have projected, we show that inflation of through the, for the entire year will on an average uh, be uh, below 4%. And therefore, obviously, you know, rate cuts is, uh, is definitely, I think, something that we should look forward to. In respect of credit growth, credit growth actually, you know, it's a function of very many things. And for us, uh, the credit growth, especially in the investment arena, I think that will happen only when uh, the capacity utilization of the capacities that are already implemented, when those come up to, say, around 75-80%. Today, many, in many of the core sectors, we are seeing capacity breach 70%. So it needs to go up a little more before we can actually see uh, more and more investment coming in. But I think uh, it is closer to us than it was maybe in the last two, three years. And therefore, I'm quite hopeful that by the middle of this year, that's the last two quarters of this year, we should see uh, much better traction in credit growth.
So uh, last two quarters of this year is when you expect uh, traction or better traction. Arundhati Bharataria, many thanks for joining us uh, at this late hour uh, to take us through the implications of the rollout of the goods and services tax. But we've also got our team of reporters still outside uh, uh, various locations. But let's go across now to restaurants in Mumbai, which apparently are shutting down for the night. Uh, Vinaya. Yes, despite it being a Friday night, most of the restaurants in the city have closed the shutters. They say they do not want any chaotic situation on the anvil of GST being rolled out. So though, you know, one of the very few restaurants like Cafe Mondegar we can see behind us is still open, but it has not taken any orders post 12 o'clock. It will shut shops in the next 10 minutes and patrons will be asked to leave. The other hotel owners are quite unhappy because they feel discriminated against. They say this 12% and 18% slab for AC and non-AC is something that they feel discriminated against and that is what the Modi government has not lived up to the essence of the GST of one nation, one tax. There is a lot of emotion among people but lot of chaos as well. People do not know how GST is going to function, how it's going to affect them, but they say yes, they are very upbeat about it and they believe that the government has done something for their good. So there is lot of chaos, lot of happiness and lot of mayhem on the field here. For the evening or not, Bhupin, but we'll try our luck. But let me let me get get across to our tax experts. Pateek Jain, uh, you know, you just heard Vinaya there talking about what's happening in Mumbai. This was expected, right? I mean, this, this, is, not, this, is, not, this is not a surprise. No, absolutely. This, this is expected and uh, it will continue for some time. I think uh, the outreach program for government started uh, in April, which I think was a little, little late. I guess uh, it will be three, four months of, uh, of chaos, uh, which will be uh, there and particularly the small businesses. I mean, I've had people calling me today in the evening, small shopkeepers are asking me, what is GST? I mean, and that's, that's where we are. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, if you ask for coffee here, I'm not sure whether you'll get a bill now at 12 o'clock at yeah. night with a GST uh, printed on that. So, so I think it will be chaos and I think government understands that. And that's why they're saying that they will open a lot of kiosk and they will do more outreach over next. Uh, so it's good, good and simple tax, but not as simple as we, we all expected. Okay, good and simple tax, not as simple. Rajiv Dimri, a quick comment from you. Uh, you know, in the, uh, on this business of the ease of doing business, because we heard the Prime Minister there saying several times over that this is going to improve the ease of doing business, it's going to improve export competitiveness. Again, on that promise, how soon do you believe that the GST is going to start to deliver? I would put a uh, time frame of six months, but I would break it into two parts. For manufacturing and trading companies, life will become simpler after six months once all these, you know, figuring out technology and all those teething trouble. The life of a service company, now we heard the SBI chairperson talking about being assessed all across the country. Now it's possible that for, you know, banking sector, the government may constitute some single window type assessment, but that's not going to happen to the entire service sector. Mm. So from a single, today service sector is a single point tax and it will move into multi-state and it's not just about filing returns, it's about maintaining books of accounts, it's being audited across states. That life is not going to be simple for a very long time. Well, actually, you know, we had, uh, we had Kiran Majumdar Shaw a uh, short while back on the program and she was ext being extremely critical of the manner in which uh, the GST was being rolled out. But can we just also go to our correspondent Shubhajit Sengupta, who I believe is uh, at the border area of uh, the national capital region. Uh, Shubhajit? The trucks, the, one of the constant sites anywhere, anywhere you travel in India at the stroke of midnight or post 10 p.m. was that huge lineup of trucks. Is that now going to be a thing of the past now? Well, trucks are something which we can see right here. This is at a stone crusher where I am right now. And here, you know, there is there's the 24 into 7 operations which takes place all through the day. But the fact is, the biggest part for them is the fact that there will be streamlining of taxes. They're saying there is some confusion, surely, but later on, as there'll be only one slab, they will not have the trusters asking them for money for every uh, state that they cross, cross, go across to. Let me just speak to some of them and ask them, what is GST coming from GST? What is the difference between GST and GST? There is no difference between the GST and GST. The tax has been reduced, and the tax बड़ी बढ़ेगी कम ना होगी और इससे जनता को भी फायदा ही होगा इससे नुकसान नहीं है कुछ भी आज अगर आज मोटा मोटा तौर पे देखिए आज थोड़ा सा डाउन चल रहा है क्योंकि कंफ्यूजन है मार्केट में ये तो थोड़ा सा है ताकि कंफ्यूजन भी है थोड़ी सी और पूरी तरीका से पता भी नहीं है 
बारिश के मौसम के लिए इससे कोई ज्यादा फर्क नहीं है जैसा काम रूटीन में था वो ही चल रहा है कोई दिक्कत नहीं इससे so you know this is one sector which is definitely feeling a lot relieved with the gst because they would be crossing states across states and every state there is different tax structures for different sales tax prices and that is soon going to be thing of past and that's why here at the crusher though the volume seems to be low right now they are very happy the fact yeah. that it is going to end uh, sometime you know, soon that's a very important point that you're making uh, and let me go across to our our tax panel in uh, mumbai rohan shah let me ask you that question you know we've been getting so many questions around what happens to check posts at midnight tonight do all the check posts go away uh, the the point is that the gst council has yet to come to a conclusion as far as the e way bill mechanism is concerned so the current state system continues so what happens in the interim uh, what is your reading of how soon we will finally move to that era it's been clearly said that you know a transitional period will be there and they've sort of benchmarked that to about 3 months and said that in the interim the states will continue or the states will actually decide so i don't think you know this aspect is sort of going to change overnight uh, as yeah. i would sort of expect that for many of the issues the impact is not going to be immediate i think we must stop and you know understand one thing to a very simple question when gst it's taken 17 years to find an answer it's a tough tough road i think we have to really celebrate the moment we have answered one of the toughest questions we ever will there will be new questions from tomorrow probably even from now but let's not lose sight of the fact that this is just an amazing achievement collectively as a nation and the problems that we will have which undoubtedly will subsist for a period of time let that not color the fact that this is in fact a achievement like no other in the economic history of our nation during all our tax panelists here on the panel are saying that this is an achievement which needs to be celebrated but on social media and i'm constantly looking at my twitter stream and i'm looking at a whole range of responses coming from all chief ministers of the bharatiya janata party who are all complimenting the prime minister and then you have the congress leadership look at kapil sibal tweet and maybe you can you know you can take it to your panel he says where is sabka saath sabka vikas this is kapil sibal former union minister where is sabka saath sabka vikas modi ji with paytm ka saath how can there be sabka vikas you know it's quite clear yeah, it's quite clear that the congress that, i think that i think that's just i'm going yeah. to accept what's going on uh, today uh, mr lakshmi kumaran would you say that that's a facetious uh, response that coming in at least from the congress party uh, on on the ushering in of the gst yes there are complications yes there will be uh, obstacles yes there will be hiccups but uh, you know so this kind of a comparison yeah. no it's absolutely unwarranted unwarranted uh, uh, money let me let me now uh, talk about specific because uh, you know one of the crucial points that we heard from the prime minister from the president as well as from the finance minister was how this actually uh, is going to be a model of cooperative federalism in fact the, the prime minister saying that this will provide states a level playing field now from an industry point of view money and you know we had uh, states like uttarakhand states like assam uh, dole out lots of incentives to industry to try and attract investments into those particular states now the center has basically said look that's up to you you decide what you want to do if you want to reimburse uh industry that's your problem now states like assam have said that they will notify those reimbursements what do you see happening in the interim as far as uh you know investments made by industry uh, where these excise exemptions were being enjoyed okay i think uh, in units which had already set up industries in areas which were excise exempted don't seem to be having too much to worry because uh, there is already a clarification issued which mentions that they will be reimbursed the amounts that were due to them now on this point one very fundamental aspect which we have to keep in mind is the fact that now the balance of convenience is completely moving from the manufacturing state to the destination state and it so happens that in most of the cases the area based exemptions have been in states which typically have been uh, neglected in the past and that is why they had to give concessions to attract industry going forward even for the last few years we have not been having any state coming out with an industrial policy which attracted investments mass scale this has been decided by governments on a very selective basis what it means to businesses which are already set up 
is that in respect of investment that they have already made, where there is a principle of promissory estoppel which they can invoke at any point of time, the amounts which they would have otherwise got as an exemption would now be eligible to them as a refund. We have also heard people mentioning that there would be a 58% and 42% sharing in terms of whatever needs to be given back. Possibly the mechanics are being worked out and will be notified very, very soon. Okay, gentlemen, I think we've got the first GST bill on the program. Deva Varsi joins us now from uh, the Big Bazaar in Mumbai. Remember, Big Bazaar keeping its uh, shuttles open till 2 a.m. They've got the big GST shopping festival on. Uh, Kishore Biani saying very clearly that, look, uh, we've decided that we're going to go for it. We're playing contrarian. Let's go across uh, to Big Bazaar. That's the first GST bill on your screen, ladies and gentlemen. Over to you, Deva. That's right, I have a couple of bills uh, here which are the very first GST implemented bills here at Big Bazaar which is observing uh, a, a 2 hour mahu, GST mahurat is, is what they're calling it from two, uh, 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. In fact, if I can just try and show you this particular bill which exactly has different levels of GST on grocery products. Now, of course, the format of the bill is not in place as yet. Big Bazaar has just started it. But I have a lot of enthusiastic consumers who have actually stepped out at midnight to avail the benefits, the early benefits of GST on uh, everyday groceries. Now, remember, groceries, of course, are uh, several of them exempted from GST, while others are in the lower tax, rack, uh, tax lab. But certainly, a lot of exciting, a lot of hype here. And yes, on, uh, on CNBC TV 18, we have the very first GST bill or uh, uh, stamped right here after consumers have started purchasing. But hold, so hold, that, bill uh, hold that bill up again. They were hold that bill up again. And uh, Mr. Roira, let me come to you. What are we not going to find on that bill? We're not going to be able to find the Swatch Bharat Seth. We're not going to be able to find the Krishi Kalyan Seth. What are we not going to find on that bill any longer, Mr. Roira? <laughs> Yes, absolutely, Shireen. You know, uh, when we started, I was telling uh, everyone that let's fasten our seat belts uh, because we are going to take off and take off from the old regime and land into the new regime, the new destination. Uh, so, of course, the new destination brings us a lesser number of taxes and very clearly what you would earlier see, VAT, service taxes, Swachh Bharat says, Krishi Kalyan says, so on and so forth, would now not be there and, and simply you would have a CGST and SGST within the state and any transaction outside the state you will have IGST. Uh, having said that, yes, whether the destination is complete, uh, not in complete sense because there are many things yet to be done and we know for a fact that initially it's going to take a little while for the administrators, even for the industry to uh, grapple with these problems but over a period of time uh, we are certain that from 17 taxes 23 cesses to just one GST, which is CGST, SGST, is a fantastic thing. Fantastic. One question, you know, which maybe yeah. we, we can ask our, our tax panelists as well, just on this question of Swachh Bharat and other cess. Would it then be fair to say that for the remainder of Narendra Modi's term, there is not going to be any new cess, hmm. any new tax which is now going to be levied? Is that, is that wishful thinking? Is that a possibility? Okay. Uh, Pratik, you want to answer that? No, I, I think it's not a wishful thinking. That's a, uh, it's a it's a possibility because the power to impose cesses mm. per se is not there except few. Mm. So so they have like entertainment tax, you know, municipal taxes. You know, municipal authorities can also into into you know implement uh, entertainment tax. There is one of the exception. Uh, you have customs cess which continues, but that was uh, cess for customs. But other than that, uh, I don't think new cesses should come. If that comes, then the, that will defeat the whole purpose of, uh, of GST. Okay, okay uh, but uh, Rajiv Dimri, you know, just on this issue of cesses, because uh, when I last spoke with the Revenue Secretary, he said, look, we've provided compensation to the tune of 55,000 crore rupees to state governments, but we may fall short. They're hoping that because of better compliance, there will not be a revenue shortfall. But if there is a revenue shortfall, then those items that are currently under the CES bracket, uh, like aerated drinks, for instance, like cigarettes, for instance, we might need to put more goods and services under the CES bracket. Do you fear that that is indeed going to be the case? I, uh, not just I fear, over a period of time, we do see that list. I do see that list growing because while it has only been kept few items, but the concept of luxury is, is, uh, is paramount and a lot of items will fall into that. 
Hopefully that won't happen in the next 12, 18 months, but we certainly see that happening uh, over a period of time. You see that happening over a period of time. Uh, we've also got with us the Finance Minister and the Deputy Chief Minister of Delhi, Manish Sisodia, joining us. Mr. Sisodia, many, many thanks for joining us here on the show, sir. The GST rollout was uh, celebrated. You were not present for the ceremony in Parliament, Mr. Sisodia. Why is that? Look, I've been in the GST meetings in the GST meetings. एक टैक्स रिफॉर्म कर रहे हैं हम जनता को लेके बहुत आशंका जनता के मन में बहुत सारी आशंकाएं हैं व्यापारी बहुत सारी आशंकाओं में अपना बाजार बंद करके बैठा हुआ है देश भर में ऐसे में सरकार सेलिब्रेशन कर रही है किस चीज का सेलिब्रेशन है अगर देश के लिए कुछ अच्छा हो रहा है तो पहले देश सेलिब्रेट करे ना अगर देश के व्यापारी डरे हुए हैं अगर देश का आम आदमी डरा हुआ है कि महंगाई बढ़ जाएगी और हम रात को बैठ के जश्न मना रहे हैं किस चीज का जश्न है आप एक टैक्स रिजीम पहले वेट होता था आप जीएसटी कर रहे हो तो अब जीएसटी आप ट्रांजेक्शन कर रहे हो हम जीएसटी में साथ थे उसके बहुत सारी चीजों पर हमारे ऑब्जेक्शन है लेकिन अगर लोगों में डर है और आप जश्न करके लोगों को कहना चाहते हो हम बड़ी चीजें तो मुझे लगता है ये ठीक नहीं है आप बड़ा करिए आप बड़ा करिए उसमें साथ है लेकिन आप बड़े डिसीजन लीजिए उसमें हम साथ थे लेकिन उस डिसीजन में अब आप व्यापारी की चीजों को दूर नहीं कर रहे हो व्यापारी की शंकाओं को व्यापारी के डर को दूर नहीं कर रहे हो और आप कह रहे हो कि हम सेलिब्रेट कर रहे हैं तो ऐसे किसी सेलिब्रेशन में जाने का मेरा मन नहीं हुआ ठीक है सर आप कह रहे हैं कि सेलिब्रेशन में जाने का आपका मन नहीं था लेकिन अगर हम व्यापारियों की आशंकाओं की बात करें तो स्पेसिफिकली आप बताना चाहेंगे कि किस प्रकार की आशंकाएं व्यापारियों की है जिससे आप चिंतित हैं देखिए मेरे दो तीन इश्यूज हैं जिनको मैं कल भी बार बार कहा हूं बार बार कह रहा हूं कि सबसे पहली चीज तो है कि जीएसटी में टैक्स रेट्स बहुत हाई कर दिए गए हैं 28 परसेंट टैक्स रेट्स इस देश के आम आदमी की जेब पे डालना और बहुत डे टू डे चीजों में डालना जैसे घर का पंखा कोई खरीदने जाए घर के लिए बिजली के कोई स्विच खरीदने जाए उसको 28 परसेंट टैक्स रेट देना पड़ेगा मोबाइल मौ, आजकल चार पांच हजार रुपए में क्या मोबाइल आता है पांच हजार रुपए से ऊपर के मोबाइल पर अगर आप अट्ठाईस टैक्स लोगे तो ये सारी चीजें माने ऐसी बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जो देश की आम जिंदगी की चीजें हैं चाय में डुबोने वाले बिस्किट पर आप इतना सारा टैक्स ले रहे हो जो कि आम आदमी बिना टैक्स के ये तो एक रिक्शे वाला नुक्कड़ की चाय वाला ये सब वहां बिकते हैं वो सब पे अगर टैक्स का इफेक्ट आ जाएगा तो मुझे लगता है ये ठीक नहीं है तो टैक्स रेट्स मेरी सबसे बड़ी शिकायत है दूसरा इसका इंप्लीमेंटेशन जिसमें मुझे अब ये डर है क्योंकि अभी मैंने थोड़े दिन पहले बार बार मैंने उसका जिक्र किया है जीएसटी जो सॉफ्टवेयर है जीएसटी के चेयरमैन का इंटरव्यू पढ़ा था उन्होंने कहा था वी वर नॉट एबल टू test this software because of time constraint we don't have time to test the software desh ke sare vyapariyon ka taxation system desh ki sari sarkaron ka taxation system aap jis software ke hawale karne ja rahe hain aap keh rahe ho ki hamare paas time nahi tha usko test karne ka aur ab hum test nahi kar payenge kyunki time nahi hai ye to bahut badi galti sabit ho sakti hai ishwar na kare koi galti ho जी आ, लेकिन अब मैं आपसे आखिरी सवाल पूछूंगी सिसोदिया जी कि अब जीएसटी काउंसिल का किस प्रकार का रवैया रहेगा किस प्रकार से आप रिस्पॉन्ड करेंगे क्योंकि फीडबैक अब आएगा इंप्लीमेंटेशन के दौरान आ, तो अगली मीटिंग जीएसटी काउंसिल की कब होगी थोड़ा बहुत एक्सप्लेन कीजिए हमें कि किस प्रकार से रिस्पॉन्सिवनेस देखी जाएगी जीएसटी काउंसिल की मुझे लगता है कि सबसे पहले तो ये आइडिया दिमाग से निकालना चाहिए कि ज्यादा टैक्स रेट्स होंगे तभी ज्यादा टैक्स कलेक्शन होगा आप टैक्स रेट्स कम करके देखिए जनता ज्यादा टैक्स देगी दूसरी चीज जितना जल्दी हो सके उतना जल्दी रियल एस्टेट को टैक्सेशन के जीएसटी के दायरे में लेकर आइए आपको बहुत सारा टैक्स यहां से मिलेगा ब्लैक मनी सारा यहां पे लगा हुआ है बहुत बड़ा हिस्सा ब्लैक मनी का देश का रियल एस्टेट में लगा हुआ है पता नहीं क्यों लोग सहमत नहीं हुए बहुत सारे फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर्स ने इसका विरोध किया जब मैंने प्रस्ताव बार बार रखा लेकिन रियल एस्टेट को इसके दायरे में लेकर आइए उससे टैक्स कलेक्शन होगा सिसोदिया जी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आज हमसे बात करने के लिए लेट्स ऑल्सो गो अक्रॉस टू पार्लियामेंट नाउ संतोष गंगवार द मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट फॉर फाइनेंस आर टॉकिंग टू टिम जी जयपुर वास्तव में ये देश के लिए ऐतिहासिक अवसर है हमारा देश 15 अगस्त उन्नीस को आजाद हुआ था पर आर्थिक आजादी का स्वरूप इसके सत्तर वर्षों के बाद अब शुरू हो रहा है और मैं इतना ही कह सकता हूं इस बहुत ही स्मरणीय अवसर के भागीदार मैं स्वयं और पूरा देशवासी सब हो रहे हैं कि वास्तव में 
अब इस आर्थिक आज़ादी के दौर में देश तरक्की भी करेगा देश की व्यवस्था जो बदल रही है उसके हिसाब से ऐसा सबको होगा और मेरा मानना यह है कि ये एक दौर ऐसा शुरू हो रहा है कि जिसकी लोग कल्पना नहीं कर पा रहे थे the minister of state for finance saying that a new era has been ushered in but let me uh, go back across now and get wrap up comments from each of our panelists uh, uh, rajiv dimri let me start by asking you uh, you know to the, to the point that manish sisodia made there as far as rates being too high uh, is that really an accurate claim to make because more or less the principle of equivalence has been adopted by the gst council but just because those are the rates doesn't mean those are the good rates the fact sure, remains that, that i get that i get so yeah. the fact remains 28% by world standard is an extremely high rate yeah but i don't think we need to judge gst at 12 or 1 uh, as it gets into i think what we've seen is the process of implementation of gst in this country which will take 3 to 5 years until we don't get real estate into it until we don't get power into it only then the true nature of gst will come in the unbundling or uh, you know taking the tax across all economic segments so let's not judge it today i think it's better than what our current system is it will take time let's not judge it today or next week or next month all that we have is the process of implementation of gst in this country okay uh, pratik uh, it's absolutely fair and we're not here to judge the gst at 12 uh, uh, 35 uh, am uh, this this morning but let's talk about now the road forward the road ahead and what you would like to see by way of response i i just want to make couple of points here one is i agree with mr sisodia that 28% is a very high rate 14% of the item attracting 28% is not a very good healthy sign for a good gst right so i think one thing which gst council has to do over a period of time is to reduce this rate the other important take away from me this whole thing which happened in parliament today was that gst is seen as the engine for social e equity and that is not something which has been talked about a lot and if you look at for example fertilizer rate coming down from 12 to 5% i think the attempt at that direction that we want to protect the agriculturists right and that there that social angle comes in and if you want to promote social equity if you want people of common man not to suffer it's important that the rates are reasonable okay and you increase the base and that's where the gst council has to come in and and second is that they we are i'm looking forward to the sectoral 18 sectors you know which which wherein they have to come with with clarification and how do they engage with industry the point which aji makes how does power come in how how does other you know, other sectors come in how do we engage with industry to successfully implement it i think that will define the success of gst you know, i'll tell you one other factor which will actually de determine the the success rate so to say of of the gst bill which is completely different from what you all are talking about the state of gujarat goes to polls you know end of year it's narendra modi's own home state a state which has a huge business environment and you know you have pretty much everyone the big daddies of business there if the state of gujarat chirin mm. you know if it goes to the bjp the bjp may well believe just like demonetization the bjp won up it said demonetization has succeeded yeah. similarly if the bjp wins gujarat as of now it looks like it may win gujarat it may feel that gst is also succeeded irrespective of what the long term consequences yeah. long term impact is mr lakshmi karan you you i not we're not asking you to comment on who's going to win the state of gujarat sir but uh, but in terms of the, the road ahead now and in terms of what you believe uh, the government needs to do to ensure the smooth transition i think uh, they must keep this gst network robust and that's very very important because for filing the returns and also keep up uploading the invoices and also the corresponding invoices becomes very very important and if the trade is losing the tr credit mm. because of malfunctioning of this the cost can go up over right mm. therefore the most important thing is to keep that particular uh, rob the software as robust and also they must all do something to about the anti profiteering law yeah. that is very very important that is definitely troubling many many industries as what exactly the scope of it etc mm. that there is no clarity on that okay so so more clarity in terms of the anti profiteering law hurry back to work uh, uh, in the wee hours of the morning for you very much in fact the whole team is still in the office you know, so nothing has changed but you know i'm i'm really amused to see all the comments coming from all the political the parties politics, you know yeah. well, i mean the job can, to make i, mean, I know but but just just look at the just look at the beauty here is a constitutional body that was created called the gst yeah. council many of us betted that it will not really carry through 
the consensus that we all expected. But they did carry through the consensus. Let's not talk about whether it's perfect or not perfect. I'm still an optimist. And I also believe this was the only way GST could have begun its journey. Hmm. If we spoke about an ideal rate of 18%, single rate, I don't we think India would have never, never seen yeah. GST. None of us would have seen GST. So now let's focus on how can we improve from here. Hmm. How can we manage the disruption? Disruption will be there. There will be a pain in the initial stages. How can we manage the disruption? I agree with what Mr. Lakshmi Kwanan said. The functioning efficacy of GSTN in the next couple of months will become critical. It's also important that they engage with the industry and the trade mm. if and when there are issues that arise. You know. yeah. There will be issues that will be arise, there will be queries, there will be confusion. If they can address them quickly if and manage the If we go by the evidence that we have so far and how quickly the GST Council has actually responded to the representations that, that have been made by industry, made by industry, then that gives us hope. And, and, and that, that you've already seen that trend. You know. yeah. They may not have addressed every single situation, but they've addressed most of the situations. Yeah. Yeah. So the responsiveness is going to be critical in the next few, uh, few months. Which if that we can do that and we can iron out the differences mm. as we go along and also bring in petroleum, power, real estate. Real estate. And yeah. I'm saying in the next two to three years, you actually see the GST that you really wanted to see. You know. Okay. So it will still take two to three years. Uh, that is the, uh, that's the hope or the wish uh, by, by when we will see the omissions that are currently uh, out of the GST ambit being brought under the GST ambit. Money, uh, the final say for, from you uh, for tonight or this morning actually. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Uh, yeah, I would morning. say that uh, having come thus far, uh, the key focus should now shift to ensuring that all sections of business and all sectors and every single business comes within GST and that is going to only happen if two things are done. First and foremost, people who are having apprehensions, please clear them out. That might require some education, that might require some hand holding, that might require the government to go an extra mile in terms of assuring people that it is necessary. The second is get everyone into part of the ecosystem because the success of GST depends on everyone in the sector or in a particular business being part of the ecosystem. So we can't leave out the small traders, we can't leave out the textile merchants, we can't leave out the small restaurants. They all have to believe in GST and become part of the ecosystem for it to really become. Before you proceed, and I want to get uh, Mr. Roira to comment on this, notifications already coming in, and the first one that's come in from the government, it's decided to impose a levy of 10% basic customs duty on cellular mobile phones, specified parts thereof, and certain electronic goods. So cellular mobile phones and specified parts of cellular mobile phones like chargers, batteries, wires, headset, microphone, and receiver keypad, USB cables and certain other specified electronic uh, goods with effect from the 1st of July. The government has imposed a 10% basic customs duty. Mr. Roira, your first comments. Well, okay, as far as the uh, customs duty on uh, import of mobile phones is concerned, uh, uh, it was very clear that sometime back uh, there was a discussion between uh, uh, you know, the Ministry of Commerce under the uh, WTO, uh, where the Indian mobile manufacturers mentioned that if we were to look at these kind of imports, it's definitely going to impact the local industry. So therefore, we were expecting this and uh, uh, certainly, you know, uh, uh, it's good for the local industry uh, to have such uh, import duties. Uh, having said that, uh, it's not only the customs duty notifications, you will see many other notifications tonight. And, and uh, uh, you know, I must say that uh, from, from an import or export standpoint, you know, government also has to look at one thing which uh, uh, probably many would have acknowledged that uh, all the imports into the country are enjoying certain exemptions. And under GST, very clearly they have said that uh, those exemptions would go away. One will have to pay IGST and then claim refund. So th that's the larger worry because India is one of the largest exporters. Uh, so India will have to, the exporters will have to now also be concerned about their cash flow towards the duties which they would pay and then take them as refund. So that's, uh, that's another uh, aspect. And uh, uh, going to, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, the disruption, uh, yes, initially there would be disruption. There could be challenges in terms of getting the refunds, filing the returns and so on and so forth. But over a period of time, I'm sure government is mindful of getting these streamlined.
All right, uh, uh, Rohan Shah, the final uh, say uh, on our tax panel for tonight. Uh, you had said that this is not a race to a date, it's a race to a result. Well, the date is here, Mr. Shah. The date is here and, you know, I think gladly so. But uh, everyone uh, does realize that we are really not at an end point, but probably, you know, defining a new starting point. This is important in terms of where we've got to. Personally, I think, you know, three things are going to be very, very important. The first is the mindset of government. Government must continue to see itself as facilitator for this tax, should not turn administrator. It has to continue to play the role of being a facilitator. Whatever it takes in terms of education, proactivism, whatever it takes, it has to be the facilitator. The second situation is uh, the IT system. Uh, one concern is its e efficiency. Uh, my worry is nation as large as ours and given what is happening all over the world, if for any reason the integrity or security of the system is compromised, uh, you are moving to one single backbone and you know the sort of vulnerability from that is, is something which sort of worries me. Uh, and the third situation I think which has to happen is that this levy must truly become universal across economic strata, across industries. You know, there are more industries to bring in, but most importantly, it must be a tax uh, that is embraced by those even at the lowest end of the spectrum in the trading stream, because if they don't, your economic numbers are going to be upset. Uh, and if that is upset, then there is going to be a loss of confidence. If you start administering by revenue targets, you are not going to see this tax through the next critical two to three years where hopefully you will now get it to include every transaction, every industry, and hopefully you will not have more than two rates. So, you know, we must congratulate ourselves for where we've got to, but quite clearly there is a long road ahead and government must be facilitator. It must be the prime facilitator for us. Rain to in, rain in the guys at revenue. That's the message there from our tax panel, uh, at least to ensure that the transition is a smooth one and the GST is in fact palatable. Let's just uh, listen in to Nitin Gatkari uh, in conversation with our colleagues. Uh, I have Nitin Gadkari with me. A uh, very key moment right now for you, especially for the industry, especially for the ministry that you belong to, because logistics is going to gain a lot from this tax. So what are your key concerns and what, what would you say about this moment? Uh, this, because of cancellation of 17 taxes and 22 cases, hmm. it will be a great relief to hmm. the businessman. At the same time, the red tapism and corruption was a big problem. Mm. So today, because of this revolutionary tax, it is a great event in the country. It is going to helpful not for the businessman and industry, but at the same time it is very, very useful for the consumer, where the rates which uh, unnecessary increase by somewhere, now it can be possible for all the people in the country, in the, in the different state, they will get the same price. Sir, there's a new term that uh, uh, Narendra Modi has given today to GST. He has called it a good and simple tax. A lot of industry representatives have been talking about it. Slowly they are graduating towards accepting it also. But small and medium traders, uh, the uh, place that you come from, Nagpur, for example, a lot of small and medium traders have been protesting today. How do you see it? Today it is just a start. Wait for a month. If any problems are there, we are ready to solve it. And we are very, very cooperative, communicative, and there is a coordination between the all stakeholders. If the problems are there, we are ready, we will listen to them, and we will, if the mistakes are there, we rectify it. So one last question. One statement during the PM speech which you will remember for the lifetime because this is an historic moment. 100%. I feel that good and simple tax. That is exactly the spirit of the tax and which the people of India, they can well approach, they can understand that. Thanks for talking to CNBC TV 18. This is a game changing document. This is why you will see that the GST is a change of the country. And the GST is a change of the country. And the GST is a change of the country. And the GST is a change of the country. And the GST is a change of the country. And the GST is a change of the country. And the GST is a change of the country. And the GST is a change of the country. 
जो गलत फहमियां लोगों के मन में दूर होने के बाद उन लोगों को एहसास होगा कि शायद हमने एक नई परिस्थिति को स्वीकार किया है जिसके देश बदलने की क्षमता है ऐसी चीज की शुरुआत हुई है आप देखेंगे आने वाले दिनों में कि जितना राजस्व बढ़ेगा उतने सरकार का निवेश कौन सी चीज में जाएगा अच्छी सड़क बनेगी अच्छे पावर प्लांट बनेंगे अच्छी पानी देने की सुविधा बढ़ेगी शिक्षा स्वास्थ्य में लोग निवेश सरकार निवेश करेगी और ये सभी का परिणाम ये होगा कि आम आदमी के जिंदगी में बदलाव लाने के लिए जो सरकार के प्रयास चल, चल रहे थे उसमें बड़ी मात्रा में बढ़ोतरी होकर आम आदमी की जिंदगी सुधर जाएगी Well, that's uh, the railway minister Suresh Prabhu, the prime minister, saying the GST is pretty much like the railways, uh, Bupin. Yes, indeed. You know what a day it's been. What a day it's been. I think I think the best way to to sum up this entire conversation which we've been having is this: that if indeed the GST succeeds, and that's a big if, given the whole array and the number of opinions that we have got from our various panelists today, if it succeeds, Shreen, I think Narendra Modi will certainly go down in history as the real architect of modern India. Well, that is right, and uh, as we said, there will be niggling issues, there will be teething uh, problems, uh, but the fact of the matter remains that uh, it is a massive change. It's a big change as far as India's tax structure is concerned, and of course, uh, we'll keep you updated on the many developments uh, right here on Network 18. But I think we've also got with us uh, the Minister of State for Finance, uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Meghwal, joining us as well. Uh, let's just. Well, we'll we'll get to him in just a short while from now. But let me take this opportunity to thank our very very patient tax panel, not just for joining us today and being with us well past midnight, but for being with us right through the year. They've been with us on every weekend as the GST Council has deliberated on the many decisions that it's had to take uh, to this point. So thank you very much, Rajiv Dimri, Pratik Jain, Mr. Lakshmi Kumar, Hari Shankar, Subramaniam, Rohan Shah, Mr. Rohira, as well as MS Money for joining us. here on network 18 uh, well past midnight uh, we're close to 1 a.m. in the morning thanks very much for your time we're going to take a break uh, we'll return with a lot more stay right there